I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call. Mr. Assipiter. Here. Mr. Yutzi. Here. Dr. Fike. Here. Mr. Friend. Here. Mrs. Geyer. Here. Mr. Grabiak. Here. Mrs. O'Rear. Here. Mr. Olson. Here. Mr. Shipley. Here. Citizens' comments uh, <coughs> on agenda items only. Uh, first, I have Abby Bear. Oh, she has a slip. Brian, can you grab Ms. Hamrocks? Mine is not an agenda item. So we're just going to ask that you wait till after the meeting. It, uh, okay. Public comment at the end of the meeting. Okay. Not after, sorry, at the end of the meeting. Melissa Moore. Hello, I'm Melissa Moore, uh, 147 Braddock Road Avenue, Mount Pleasant, uh, Pennsylvania, clearly, um, East Huntington Township. Um, so I briefly got to look over the agenda today and the two things that caught my eye um, was the budget and the comprehensive plan. Um, a couple things on the budget. I mean, we keep saying that there's not gonna be any tax increase, but in the end, if you look at the numbers, it's kind of leaning towards that. Um, when are we gonna make this clearer what the tax increase will be? Um, you also talked about a psychologist, I believe internship um, that's grant funded. Is that money earmarked for that? Cause I believe it was $25,000. That's a pretty high paid internship. And then what are the criteria for the person that's able to apply for it? Um, another thing, just quickly, because it appears that you're gonna vote on this today, but on the comprehensive plan, um, talk about how our test scores are pretty much horrible. Um, and the improvements that you wanna make are, appears buying more technology, updating um, curriculum and um, that te the team meetings that we've been talking about. But the last meeting you said that you were going to implement two hour delays on the schedule. Um, I don't know how that's effective for our area. And without having a tax increase, I don't know how you're going to fund new computers or a new curriculum um, because the budget clearly says that uh, like capital expenditures weren't included in this budget. Um, also somewhere in here, and I don't know the exact wording, um, talk about that our district's a poor district. Um, so just to talk about the two hour delays because I don't agree with the Mondays off that we have already. Um, so it's a couple scenarios. You have a family already struggling in, you know, if they have the tax increase. Now they have to either take off work or pay for daycare, which they can't afford anyway. Um, you also talk about how when kids come to school, you know, that's some kids, that's like their hot meal for the day. Well, now we're taking that away from them as well. Um, you kind of got to, I don't know if by adopting this plan, um, like you get to lay out the things inside it, but I don't think a two hour delay and I definitely don't think the Mondays work. I know you say you need them for team meetings because we're already short staffed and you can't uh, staff them, but maybe you stay after school one day for a couple hours and that's when you have your team meetings, but we're taking away from the kids. Thank you. Catherine. Out of respect, you should do the public first. Jan Kiefer. Mm. 
628 Homestead Avenue. <clears throat> um, I want to talk about the minutes that you're going to approve tonight. Um, when I went back to the beginning of the last regular meeting, when I was up here speaking, we decided, or you decided, that uh, it wasn't, wasn't an agenda item that I was attempting to speak on. I accepted that and, and started to uh, turn and walk away from the stage. And at that point, I heard some um, comments about myself that you can listen to on the tape. Um, back to the minutes, though. The minutes uh, say that there was no public comment last month. There was no um, attempt at public comment, no card filled out, no derogatory uh, remarks made to the person who was, didn't give public comment but did, and then the person was given a warning. The second warning, which came um, a warning for legal action and whatever you're going to do, put me in jail. And then that comes on I, the, the meeting before, whenever uh, I got my first warning. All right, so back to last month's meeting. Um, I walked off the stage, the derogatory stuff came. I reacted as I didn't even hit this, hit my chair yet, just as Mrs. Mondalk reacted whenever her integrity was called into question. And it can only be fixed at that point. And you can't fix it and you didn't fix it and you had options to fix it. And then when you have the audacity to put the minutes out there as if nothing happened, all that bullying, all that garbage that you did, um, just like, uh, well, you can finish that sentence. Yesterday, I watched the Supreme Court hearing. I put about seven hours on that course to listen to the analysts. And, and I'm, most of us might know that it was about the, the government's suppression of uh, speech and the, and the lives it's cost and, and uh, when the Twitter files and all that stuff. Um, so your bullying is covering up your mistakes. I was in right when I was at the last meeting saying I've been degraded. And it went on and on. You can hear it and you heard it. And you can also go back to the meeting before when I was protesting, where is the public comment for the walk-on item? And if there is no clear way for that and there was a walk-on tonight, there would have been a problem here because I would not have known when that was going to happen. If you recall, when we had Zoom meetings, we stopped the meetings, waited for people to call in. When it comes up and if there's a walk-on motion that comes up tonight, are you going to stop the meeting? Or are you going to give us time to comment? I'm sure you, you have that all right. But if you say, if you, if we're going to announce we have a walk on, and two minutes later you're going to walk up to the podium and you're going to make the comment on it, that's not fair to us. Nobody can can come in here, make a hear, hear an announcement, and and be able to give due con, complex or comment on it. You could at least go into the meeting, discuss it, like we have for a generation here and then call for the public comment. That way, I've had time to hear about it, had time to see it being discussed, and then you're going to vote it. You want to do this slingshot meeting? Thank you, Mr. Kiefer. Rhonda Hamrock. You want to save it till the end? OK. Catherine Fike. <laughs> I am speaking to two items that are on the agenda. I'm concerned about the budget, which has been estimated, the last I heard of, at $35,500,000 for 1,800 students. You'll see an item on there called ERIP. That stands for Educational or for the, in, the third letter is I, and that's an in, incentive program to get teachers to retire. Now, I have kept records of this since this has been going on for many years in Southmoreland, and to date, we have paid $8.3 million to retiring teachers to leave, $8.3 million. This plan, if it's adopted, could cost up to another $500,000, which would take this figure up to about $9 million. Dr. Fike, I'm going to stop you here because you're disclosing now things that you learned in executive session. This is no, contrary to no, no, your no, role. No, 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 it is. No, you're, no. you're throwing out numbers that you received in executive session. That's on session. the agenda. It's on the agenda. 
it's on the agenda. No, the EREP is on the agenda. The information yeah. you're sharing in violation of your it's from the past. It's member. from the past. No, it's not. You, you know what? I've had numbers. it with you. I'm sure you have okay. because I'm here protecting the Anyhow, this we have been here paying out approximately nine million dollars. I have kept a record of every tax increase that has occurred in this district since 2002, and only the tax increases, as they were paid, came up to nine million five hundred thousand dollars in tax increases. Uh, the other concern that I have is they are going to hire an, a secretary tonight. We have an opening. We could we could reassign these things. They are going to hire a secretary tonight. I, I submitted a right to know request, and I can tell you right now that the cost of our secretaries is $1.3 million. That's what we pay for a year for secretaries. Eight of them are administrative, only seven of them are not. So I am concerned about increasing hiring, paying out money, and giving teachers incentive to leave. These teachers may or may not be able to be replaced. We are very concerned about information coming from the state that there are no teachers available. We are really worried about what's going to happen to our students. This is, this is, these are important issues that are on the, these are items on the agenda. Thank you. Do you have any more public comment? No, just for the end. I, was, I don't know if, I, if we're allowed to do this, but I would like to make a, a motion or an amendment to this particular rule as an exception for a student that is here that would like to comment. Because I don't feel, me personally, I don't if know about five of you, If five of you want to allow the students to comment now so that they can go home, yes. that's fine. I'm in favor. I'm in favor of I'm that. I'm in favor of that. Abby, if you'd like to speak now. Abby Ver, 1871, Route 981, Scottdale. Can you pull a little bit? Move your closer? microphone a little closer. Thank you. Good evening. I'm here tonight to talk about changes I strongly feel need to be impacted. Sorry. Impacting varsity sports through my own experience. I never want to see this happen to any other senior ever. I've been a varsity cheerleader for the past two years for this school. All of the incoming seniors were awarded automatic spots on varsity for their senior year in early February. Sorry. You're being so brave. You're doing such a good job. This good. is really scary, and you are doing great. In February, I began asking if this would be the procedure for the upcoming school year. Then on February 2nd, Susan, the coach, called my mom and told her Mr. Pritz and her had decided that we would also not need to try out. Only a week later, they had changed their minds. I accepted this and started preparing. Susan and Mr. Pritz told me repeatedly that I had nothing to worry about and that I would be fine. The week of tryout practices, Susan even had me helping to teach the fling, our band dance, to the girls that didn't know it. I took this as a huge compliment and truly believed she believed in me. Then on March 8, I walked into cheer tryouts, smiling and spiriting for the judges. I did all my dances and cheers perfectly. I smiled the whole time. I was sharp. I was a cheerleader ready to make the varsity team my senior year. It was such an exciting day for me. The two other juniors and I had discussed senior uniforms the year before, and I was so excited to wear them. I felt proud to show the judges that what I could do as I head into my senior year. When the athletic director asked me how I did after tryouts, I gave him a smile, then a thumbs up. I felt really confident, encouraged, ready to be a senior. <laughs> after tryouts, I sat in the cafeteria, so excited to hear the results, and as Mr. Pritz read the numbers of the players who made the varsity, my heart sunk. I would be on JV and all the other seniors would be on varsity. After already being on varsity for two years and lettering both years, this was a complete shock that I had been demoted and would not get to cheer for the senior athletes, my classmates during my senior year. 
Rather, I would have to cheer for the underclassmen. This may not seem like a huge deal to some, but to me it felt like an overwhelming disappointment that would impact my entire senior year when all the memories you make really matter. When I looked up other schools' regulations, I found senior athletes are not eligible for junior varsity competition and shall not play on any JV team in any sport. I love that it says that, and I believe in it, so why would cheerleading oppose to this value that is so clearly asserted by many other schools? Sports are competitive, I get that, but not getting to look up in the stands to see my grandparents watch me cheer on my team for one of the last times is going to be devastating. I won't get to dance to the fling while my classmates make a touchdown. I won't get to walk the field and be recognized on senior night. I won't get to have fun with my friends just being a senior doing a sport that I've done at the varsity level for two years. That makes me incredibly sad, disappointed, and even a little resentful that anyone would allow this to happen over one point. I'm a human being, not a scorer, and I'm asking you to please look at the big picture and give me the opportunity to be on this Scotty Cheer Squad my senior year. Since I started cheering in seventh grade, I am the first varsity cheerleader to not be on varsity their senior year. I promise I will make our school proud and I would be so grateful for you to allow me to have a memorable senior year like the other senior members of our cheer squad. Ultimately, I would love to see the school do what's right and make this change, but truly I want to make sure that this never happens again to any varsity player their senior year. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It takes a lot of courage to get up in front of a bunch of adults. It does. So that was really great. You did a great yeah. job. Can I ask something to the solicitor? What's involved to change the policy on seniors on varsity? So if there's a, if this is a matter of your board policy, you just need to, uh, to I mean, your typical process would be the policy committee uh, would develop a change to the policy that, that you'd bring forward. Well, because I asked the president to call uh, Meeting in the very, very, very near future? Uh, April 2nd. We have a April 2nd. Is that the That'll policy the committee or is it the athletic That'll committee? It'll be the athletic the committee. Athletic committee. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk there. Welcome. Think, Anybody's welcome to come. I think the policy needs it's a, changed. I don't, I don't know that it's an actual policy. <coughs> uh, we right. need to look at it, whatever it is. Right. Sure. Okay. April 2nd. It's a, and it's a public meeting. So whoever, I mean, any of our policy meetings, or sorry, any of our committee meetings are public. You're welcome to come. Did you say you don't know if there is a policy? I don't know that it's written in policy um, that what is preventing. I don't know that it's in policy. I don't, he's saying he doesn't know if it's board policy or if it's like an athletic Practice. policy. Or just specific to even that. Well, there's a big sport. difference. Well, yeah, so yeah. someone will yeah. look into it and then decide the way that it has to be handled. Well, that's what policy committees are for. That's what they're saying. Oh, it's, a, it's under the April athletic 2nd. committee for each individual sport. Each individual That's sport to, to kind of have their own policy when it comes to that each individual sport. And it's something that we'll definitely That's held in the student into. union, right? We're going to hold that in the student union? Where do you hold right. that at? Yes. Yeah, student yeah. union. So there'll be at the student union April 2nd. Yeah. What time? Usually they're like 536-ish. I think it's 6 o'clock. I don't maybe. know if we set an exact time, but... Right around that time. It what is the basic document we would be looking at? Any? Like, I'm searching the board. It's not necessarily not sure a clear document. It it's just it's like, not a board level. So, because each sport have their own bylaws, let's just say. So we're we're going to start. And if it's written in there, like, it could have been done before we, any of us, yeah. were even on the board, and it's just something we'll, that's just been a, you know, we'll, there for the end of time. Yeah, we'll start the discussion so we have to look, in yeah. athletics. Yeah. Um, and if it becomes a policy issue, then it will. And that makes policy, sense since that I, meeting is. I yeah. think yeah. we'll be able to handle it in athletics. Yeah, I searched varsity under the board policies and nothing came up under varsity, so it okay. might be like a All right. local um, policy. Superintendent's information. Sure. Um, tonight, uh, in lieu of doing my typical Scotty Spotlight, we do have a presentation about a program we're going to be running here out of the middle school called Rachel's Challenge. Um, we have a couple of people coming up ready to speak about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up that um, presentation for you. Please uh, come up to the podium. There's no policy. Okay. Uh, Hi, 
Oh, sorry, I'm super <laughs> loud. Um, my name is Nicole Profnick, for those who don't know me. Um, I'm a sixth grade language arts teacher here at the middle school. I've been teaching in the district for 24 years. I can't even believe I'm going to say that, but that is true. Um, I am really proud to say I was also a South Moreland graduate and had the opportunity to come back here and teach in my hometown with some of the best teachers um, who molded me when I was young, so that was a wonderful opportunity. Um, the reason I'm talking to you today about Rachel's Challenge is Several years back, um, in 2018, we had a wonderful group of ladies, including Gail Rhodes at the time, and we found this program called Rachel's Challenge. We got to go and witness it in other school districts, and the minute we were there, we realized this has to come to our school. Um, we did bring it that year, and that program for the kids who were there and for the teachers who experienced it, it literally changed our lives. I think you two were there, not to put you on the spot, but it, um, it changed my life, not only in the classroom as a teacher, but outside, just wanting to be a good human being. So um, <laughs> ever since then, um, we couldn't get it back originally. Before COVID had happened and everything kind of got a little crazy and then budget restraints and things like that. But I never stopped trying. Um, I'm super persistent for anybody who knows me and a little stubborn. Um, so I just kept pushing. Um, and here we are with a little help from these ladies. Um, we found wonderful support in our community to make this happen. So tonight, I just want to, for people who don't know what Rachel's Challenge is, because it's coming to our school, I want you to know a little bit about it. Um, before I get into the actual program, it's super important that you even know who Rachel Joy Scott is because the whole program is based on her. Uh, Rachel Joy Scott was born in Denver, Colorado in 1981, and she was part of, she was a middle child of five children. Her middle name, Joy, described her to a T. Her parents would say she just had this energy about her that made everybody love her. Um, she actually was performing a experiment on her own that both her parents nor her siblings, no one knew about. She wanted to try to reach out to a certain group of kids um, that were not in the necessarily popular crew who felt left out that she, that she noticed. And she wanted to try this experiment. Um, she wanted to reach out to them with compassion and empathy, and then she wrote, it about, uh, wrote about it in her journal um, to see if she could change uh, the dynamic of her school. So later, when her parents found this journal, they saw that she wrote this. I want to reach out to those with special needs because they are often overlooked. I want to reach out to those who are new in school because they don't have any friends yet. And I want to reach out to those who are picked on or put down by others. She did exactly that. And she not only wrote about these experiments, but she made it her goal to live her life that way. She had a theory, and this is what Rachel's Challenge is all about, a theory that one person can go out of their way to show compassion, then it will start a chain reaction of the same and that people will never know how far a little kindness can go. Little did she know, she had no idea that those simple words today, 25 years later, would be heard all across the United States to children all over the world and making a huge difference. Um, Rachel Joy Scott was no different than you and I as a teenager. She shared the same struggles that we had growing up, not quite knowing uh, where we fit in, if we weren't in the popular crew, um, trying not to give in to peer pressure. It's really, for those of us who work with kids, it's really difficult. Middle school and high school is, is hard to know where your place is. And today is even um, harder with social media and all the pressures that there are. But she truly believed that even those people that were different on the outside, that in the inside, we are all the same. And if we could connect in that way and show empathy to one another, then it would just make our world a better place. Um, unfortunately, she did believe that and that mental, our mental, positive mental health 
It will prevent tragedies, but she was part of the first major horrific tragedies in schools. Um, I didn't say this right off the bat because the program is not based on her death. It's how she lived. But Rachel Joy Scott was the first, in the first school shooting, Columbine, in 1999, she was the first child shot at age 17. Um, back then, I remember it. I was in college. I'm dating myself now. But I remember surrounding the all of my roommates and I surrounding the TV and just in horror that something like this could happen. Because to us, that was just unheard of. Um, to then fast forward 25 years, to then have my kindergartner come home one day and say, I have to have stranger danger drills. We are so far removed from where we were to where we are now. Um, that being said, she, her parents, when this happened, did not want to focus on her death. They wanted to focus on the way she lived. And that's what the program is about. So with, um, yes, did Rachel Scott die too young? And yes, was it horrific? I don't even know how her parents somehow handled it and then brought it into themselves to have forgiveness and start this to help all other kids, but they did. Um, Something before I get into the program, and, and it will say this when, um, when we have it here for the school, Rachel Joy Scott somehow knew that she was going to die young. Her parents have no idea how she knew that, um, and she was at somehow peace with it. They found drawings that she had, things that she wrote about, even on the back, and this is the image up on the board, even on the back of her dresser at 13, year old, 13 years old, they pulled it away and her handprint was there. And this, what was, this is what was found. These hands belong to Rachel Joy Scott and will someday touch millions of people's hearts. How she knew she was going to make this big difference, I'm unsure, but she absolutely did. Um, she realized at a very young age that no matter what background you come from, no matter what parents you have, no matter who you are in school, that your life matters. And that's what this program brings to kids. So the program um, itself is based on uh, Rachel Joyce Scott's family decided when this happened, they wanted to bring something positive out of it. So not only her parents, but her siblings um, pulled this program together to be a preventative program. This is something that should be in place in schools so that these things don't happen. Um, she, they, the, the whole premise behind it is if you build connections with kids, between staff, kids, that those building connections then will make our world a better place. Showing empathy, showing respect. If you can respect yourself, then you can respect others. We all know that if kids come to school and they don't feel safe or they don't feel wanted or they have all of these other things going on that they don't feel they can have an adult to connect with, they don't want to come to school. So if we can build an, build an atmosphere that has all of those things, then kids will want to come to school and then the academics will follow. Until you have all of that, um, our scores and, and all of that stuff that we do in school, can't happen. Um, the, the whole program in itself is certainly not based on the tragedy of her life. Now, they do touch on it depending on what age level. It's always very age appropriate. They do touch on it, but it's all about her writings and how if you show compassion to others, we can change our whole dynamic in school. So if you can see, the, are the program that's actually going to come here um, we were fortunate enough to raise money. Uh, it is a semi-pricey um, program, but well worth it, because in that I wanted to show you these are the things that are provided. So in that you get three live presentations from a presenter that comes from Colorado. Um, we all, we usually base it on age groups. So perhaps three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight would get a little bit more in detail of her story. Also with that, 90 students are trained so that when 
The idea is to keep the program going. It's a cycle where it's not the same program every single year. You get a cycle of three years and then it starts over. And what you create from that is something like a four club or we have um, the closet downstairs. And what the idea of that is to train your students to keep this going in, in the school. So maybe it's a, a group of students, when new students come in, you get them a care package and you walk the schools with them and show them kindness. Maybe it's when sixth graders come into a transition, they're always so nervous anyway that we put little post-its on lockers and say, you know, smile or all these things on our, on our um, mirrors having quote, positive quotes that they see everywhere. So it's really simple things that don't seem like a lot, but mean a lot to kids. So the kids will be trained and 10 staff members will also be trained. And then the really interesting um, factor in this that I love is that at night they come back for our community. Anybody in the entire community is able to come so the kids can go home and bring their parents. And, and it's a, an entire, not just a school event, but a community changing all together, which I feel is super important. The program basically focuses on these skills, empathy, self-confidence, good decision-making, and resilience. It also focuses on five key elements of the social and emotional learning, which is self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and again, social awareness. Rachel's challenge focuses on the five things which we show with her handprint, um, looking for the best in others, dreaming big, choosing positive influences in your life, speak with kindness, and start a chain reaction. Um, you may ask why, why is Rachel's challenge such a big deal and why did we keep pushing to get it back to South Moreland? Well, this is our reality and I have some stats in the um, presentation. Right now, 160,000 students skip school every single day for fear of being bullied. For, one, for every one of these, there are likely another who's withdrawn and another one that is fighting the system. None of them are in the emotional state to learn and the problem is much bigger than we can actually see. So many of our kids, and, and we as teachers see this on a daily basis, they come hungry. They don't know school lunch is their only meals. They come exhausted because they don't know where they're going to sleep that night or where they did sleep. They don't feel safe. They don't feel they belong. So creating a school or at least a classroom that we can do that can then help these kids focus on learning. Some of the benefits that come along with Rachel's challenge is, first of all, when a student is connected, they are less likely to hurt themselves or hurt someone else. Teachers who spend time connecting with their students, they build relationships. And this is something I have, I practiced this in my classroom. Mackenzie Thompson was here last board meeting and spoke. I didn't know she was speaking about me, but I was super proud and, and on tears watching it at home. She came back um, to my classroom and witnessed me doing what we call a find out about me Friday. Now, I'm sure you didn't know what that meant when she said it, but this is all in the 180 connections with Rachel's challenge. That's where I got it from. And it's every Friday sharing an experience of my life and letting them share theirs. And I truly believe that's why my kids connect with me because they see me not as the teacher, but a human. That things happen to me. My parents were divorced. And they say, oh, how did your parents, be? your parents were divorced or you struggled in school to read and then you came back to teaching? It's that connection. And then they feel safe. When they feel safe, then they wanna learn. So it seems really, really simple, but it's, it's not. There's more that goes into that. So basically, in, in closing, I know I'm, I'm taking up a lot of time and I apologize, but I truly, in my heart of hearts, believe that Rachel's challenge is something we need here, not only in our school, but in our community. Um, our kiddos are struggling, especially after COVID, and this is the perfect time to bring it back. Um, I'm super proud to say that um, a lot of great people in the community helped Christy and Jenny and I um, 
<laughs> Christy probably was tired of hearing me bug her. Um, please help me, please help me get this. And she did. And with some really great people, um, we were able to do that. Now, there, I don't know if you have time, but there is a short little video. Um, I know you have a lot on the agenda tonight. If you have time to look at it, it's Rachel Joy Scott's dad talking about the program and what it meant to he and his family to take something positive out of what his daughter wanted to happen for the world. And with her death, it didn't stop there. Her words continued. Um, so I don't know if, Christy, you want to... On that page, there's all these wonderful people. This community, I said I was proud to come back to South Moreland. I'm still proud to be at South Moreland. There are many good people here, and that's why this happened. Um, so with those, all those people, we have Rachel's Challenge is coming. Uh, I want to personally invite you, please come, bring your families, bring your kids on May 7th uh, at 6.30 in the auditorium at the high school. Uh, we will have our live event for the entire community. Please come hear about her. I promise you uh, nothing will be the same. At least it wasn't for me. And none of us ended without tears that day and made an effort to make our life about compassion and kindness. You guys have any questions? I do. Yes. Why, why do we need a challenge like this? Shouldn't we be doing this on a daily basis anyways? Well, I think that a lot of teachers on a regular basis do do this. Um, I mean, that's, I agree. that's part of our job. But I think as a whole, um, a lot of our children, we, we take for granted that they're taught all of this, but I don't know that it is. And school is hard. Um, Facts, yeah. It is. And social media, I mean, everybody who knows, I know with my own child, it is nonstop. They can't get away from these things. So I think that just having that comfort and making them feel comfortable that it's a safe place. And with the program, you'll see, I hope that all of you are there. I can't even explain how wonderful it is or what it does until you actually witness it yourself. Um, I didn't believe it until I witnessed it. And I was like, oh, wow, this is really... Like, how could this girl's story make such a big difference? But it does. It does. So. And then if I can just speak from the community end of it, um, I was able to see Rachel's challenge when it was here a few years ago because I was the president of PTA, so I was helping with it. It was incredible. Um, and when she said they were going to do it again and she brought up the community aspect of it, I said, okay, this is great because you guys can focus on the kids and then the community partners that help with this, all of us, we need to focus on the community. Sure. And in saying that, not just the kids need help, there are adults, and we have to watch how we do things, how we say things, how we speak to people, the kindness that we show to people, because of all of these kids in the community and this school are looking at us and modeling what we do on a daily basis. So I think it's super important when you guys are at these meetings, when the teachers are teaching, they need to know how to model the appropriate, kind, empathetic behavior that these kids need to be doing between themselves as well. So that was my big draw in helping with this because our community desperately needs something like this as well. And I think too that it probably is more helpful to hear it coming from an outside speaker that is telling kids, no offense, they hear from them every single day. You need to be kind. You need the same as our own kids. You know, I can tell my kids to be kind all day and they're like, I know, mom. Right. But, oh, yeah. For you know, sure. when you hear an example of somebody that, you know, school shootings are real to them and somebody that, that their life was, you know, taken in that, I think it's just a little more powerful. So, anybody else have any questions? Okay. I hope to see everybody there. Please come. Um, you will not regret, regret it. It will, it will change you, I promise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple other quick items. Um, first of all, I, I did uh, kind of look at our hiring process based upon the past meeting, and, and I have some uh, recommended changes to use uh, moving forward. So um, just wanted uh, everybody to know that the administration heard it loud and clear. Um, second of all, I kind of wanted to speak to our current grants list, which I said I'd be adding to every um, one of my reports moving forward. Uh, all of the green items were items that we have been awarded. Uh, in the time between the last meeting and now, I'll tell you that the PA breakfast, uh, breakfast expansion grant at SPC, we got awarded for an amount of uh, a little over $6,000, which is huge to enhance 
our offering at SPC, and I found out yesterday, and this is a big one, uh, we wrote a grant for uh, $750,000 for comprehensive mental health services in all of our schools, K-12, and we, it was a competitive grant uh, with other schools, and we got $550,000 out of that $750,000 um, that we have earmarked for comprehensive mental health services in terms of uh, specialty mental health counselors, uh, school social work services, mental health spaces in our schools, and then positive behavior intervention support programs in all of our schools uh, over the course of the next couple of years, which is absolutely huge. Um, I've heard our principals talk about it at almost every single principal meeting about how uh, we are uh, stretched at the seams with the services and supports we need to be offering our kids right now and how our kids are hurting. And, and this speaks to the presentation we just heard of. So, so getting this at the same time we're having this presentation um, warms my heart and it makes me happy that we're able to do this for our kids and for our community. Uh, $550,000 is not a small dollar amount, uh, especially when it's a competitive grant. So we are the only school in Westmoreland County who was able to get that grant. Uh, there were two other schools in Allegheny County able to get that grant. Um, but once again, I'm happy to, to report that we did receive that, um, that huge amount. Lastly, before I get off the mic, I wanted to uh, congratulate and commend all the students who did a fantastic job at the Music Loves there Sunday. So you guys did a great job. I, I think I heard 41 practices <laughs> going into it. Is that the number that I remember correctly? Around there, yeah. yeah. That is a monumental amount of time and commitment. So kudos to you. The show was great. Um, I was great to, it, I was very happy to be there and, and I'm sure you feel a little bit relieved <laughs> now that it's over. So congrats. There's been lots of ABBA playing in my house. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, for sure. Quick question I did want to ask and I didn't um, about that Rachel's challenge. I seen that it only went up to like say eighth graders. Why not to high school as well? Do we know that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. Go ahead. I, I'm sure I don't uh, I would <laughs> please, please, please to the microphone, to the mic. or else that way the public can see yeah, it from yeah, the live video. <laughs> People are born with that teacher yeah. voice. <laughs> so I'm glad actually you asked that because I my intention was to have it at the high school. So when I reached out to the sponsor for it, because it's a different venue, it has to be a complete separate. They would have to do their own separate. So originally we thought five, six, seven, eight high school. Yeah. Well, they said they tried that because, because there's so much going on in that day when they traveled to another school, they couldn't get it all in. Okay. So that was what I tried to do. I had contacted the high school, was super excited about it. And then when I contacted them, they said they can't switch venues. So maybe if this is something that, you know, we like when, when this happens, maybe in the future it definitely, um, and then we are still training our eighth graders that are then going to the high school so that all of these still, still benefit our students. And maybe that's something that we can even take from this particular program and implement some of the techniques or strategies or what have you into the high school. Absolutely. So, that's the goal. Anyway. Yeah, sure. But I did try, so. Fantastic. I thank you for answering yes. that. All right, solicitor's information. I have no report tonight, Mr. President. Business manager, transportation director information. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me, um, let me say the board met in executive session prior to tonight's meeting to discuss matters related to personnel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Business Manager, Transportation Director, Information. Well, I have a question for the solicitor. Go ahead. On March the 6th, 2024, we received a memorandum from you, and I would like you to explain it. Um, which memorandum is that? March 6th? Well, it says that nobody on the school board can submit an agenda item except the president and two unelected people. That's the one. So the point of my memo was to point out to the board, because I know that there had been some requests received from board members for addition of items to the agenda, that that was a feature of your old policy, uh, which was repealed by the board on February 20th at your last public meeting. Okay. When was that policy submitted for discussion to the policy committee? Um, I can't answer that question. January. When was that policy ever discussed with the board? Well, it was subjected to 
two readings, I believe, or yeah, two readings. So it would have been read in January um, at your January public meeting, and then it was read a second time and adopted with finality in February. You were provided copies of those policies, weren't you? Yeah, I think what the, what the issue is with many members is we didn't catch that it was removed. We saw the, the basic boilerplate that was there before, but that portion was removed. And I don't think, myself personally, I didn't catch that. Now, I understand from Dr. Boone that this came down from... Yes, from, that's, and that's an important point to make. Because I've actually wrote to them. I want to hear from them. Yes. So this is, so the policy that you adopted at your February 20th meeting after a second reading, that's a version of policy 006 that's a template from PSBA. So PSBA is going through and, and revising uh, lots of their policies, and all the districts that are policy subscribers are receiving the new version of the policy. The version of your policy that contained the three members can get any item on the agenda as long as it's presented, um, I think, five days before the meeting. I hadn't seen that anywhere else, um, but, but that's not a part of PSBA's template for policy 006. Was it ever there? I don't remember it being there, and I can. I haven't heard back you. from them, but I did. Yeah, I did write. I to can. Them. I can look at other school districts if that's something that. What authority they does the PSBA have? Well, I mean, obviously, you're free to adopt whatever policy you want. Correct. The PSBA puts out policies that, in their view, and based on their experience, and which this district pays money for, to take advantage of of their expertise. And so that school districts across the, across the state, excuse me, to the extent possible, um, have consistent policies in place based on best practices. Now, obviously, you're, you're entitled to. The SBA has no legal authority. And you state in your memo, it's only a recommendation. Correct. Show me where the people from PSBA are here to vote in the Southmoreland School District. They are not. We are very, very angry, Mr. Lucas. We've been deceived. We've been deceived. Okay? Well, you've also not read the policy that you adopted. All I got in my bit picket, my packet was number 56 out of 57, two numbers. But I have some questions. When you redid that policy. I didn't redo I anything. Redid. Sorry, PSBA you... redid that policy. When you, re where, under agenda preparation, you have listed the legal sources for everything, but you don't list it under that one, on this active policy. Why is there no number under the Again, agenda you keep using the pronoun you, and I'm going to tell you that I had absolutely nothing to do with the preparation of this policy, so I would ask that you amend your pronouns. Well, then let me ask the president of the board why this was not submitted to the policy committee for discussion in January. We met in January. So I think past practice is um, we put it on the agenda for two readings. That means two meetings. Please answer days. my question, Dwayne. I'm on the policy committee. Why was not this information yeah, I'm, I'm submitted to, to the policy committee in January? So past practice is... I don't want past practice. Oh, okay. Please tell me why it was not submitted to the policy committee. Because that's not what we normally do. Mr. Lucas, you just said that the procedure generally used for uh, uh, policy changes is it goes to the committee and it's discussed and then it's voted on, right? That's certainly one way that you can approach it. And you can decide that you want to do it differently based on whether it's a new policy or an amended policy. It, it's really a matter of what your local practice is. Yeah, Who decides how, it, how it's done differently then? It was published in January. Uh, it, was pub it was never submitted to the policy committee. Please, Dwayne, answer that question for me. That's Why? a question. Oh, um, that's generally how we, we haven't done it in the past that way. Past practice has been to when we update policies that they go on the board agenda. Okay, so all those committee meetings that Christy Smith reported on for the years were never discussed with the policy committee. Is that correct? That was the past practice? I wasn't on the policy committee. Was that past practice? It was I, not. She I met with her committee. They reviewed the practices, the policy changes, the policies, I'm sorry, and then they were placed on the agenda. Okay, if you didn't want to submit it to the committee, why didn't you discuss it with the board? Well, it was discussed in the form of play, being placed on the agenda for two Discussion is not placed on an agenda. Discussion is words. 
Wait, I'm really confused. Know, Why wasn't this brought up when we were supposed to be voting on it? Well, you know, uh, Nicole, they took away your right to place a, an item on the agenda, too. Well, I don't think that's, that's all of us. No, no, no. no. Yes, they, did. they didn't take my right away. That yes, is, they did. Because I can contact Dwayne, or I'm sorry, um, I can contact Dwayne and say, Stephanie and I have an idea, and I can contact Dwayne and say, hey, we have this idea. Um, we'd like to bring it to the board to see what they think about it. Um, if he says yes, then we can put it on the agenda. If he says no, then we're out of luck. We yeah, can't. There, there's definitely a proper procedure in yeah, place. Yeah, absolutely. We can, you can still bring the stuff to the board I, put, or to the board president, um, to our solicitor, to our superintendent to you know see about putting it on to our agenda. Well, we so, had five motions we wanted to bring, on, bring, bring to the agenda and they all got denied so i know you're feeling well, I, I don't i don't know why they got tonight i'm just saying like in past practice it's always been this way anytime i had an idea i've always brought it towards the board president um or i've had you know brought it to one of my colleagues and we brought it to the board president because i mean ultimately i my understanding of the policy even past practice was he also had to have an idea in that. Now, if he said no, then I can go and challenge him with another board member. Did he bring it not to? So let me say this say. so that we can move forward. As you know, Dr. Fike, board policy can be changed at any time by four, five, the affirmative vote of five board members. So if you desire to change the policy back, you should raise that with the policy committee and see whether or not five members of the board want to agree with you. To when when is the, the old policy, policy committee meeting again? Well, I think you have to set a meeting. No, oh, no the, we have, the, we the have next more one isn't until, I want to say, end of April. Well, let me yeah. ask you this. The five yeah. motions that were turned down, since it wasn't handled correctly, can we have them added? I, don't, I think that back? we're... I don't say... I would not agree that it wasn't handled correctly. No, it was handled correctly. I think that where, you're, where you're, the timeline is being misconstrued is, is you all were sworn in on the board in December. So the first meeting that you brought agenda items to was in January, Correct. This policy first read was at the January meeting. So I think that you're feeling like this was done intentionally to attack you, but it was just an automatic update that came from PSBA that because the policy committee didn't then meet until January 30th, was put on the agenda for reading. The someone, superintendent someone had said. reviewed it and felt like there weren't major changes, and so it was enacted. So I think that what you're feeling is though this was a personal attack on you, but if you look at the timeline. Stephanie, I'd like to see I, a show I, of hands. I, I who, actually, who knew about this policy before this agenda came? I, so, give me a show I, of hands. Can I, what, I just what? was talking, and I know that you don't like to be interrupted what? and disrespected, so I don't know why it's okay for you to interrupt and disrespect me when I'm speaking. You're telling us that we're being attacked. No, I, I right said, I feel that that's how she you're feeling. She said that feeling. you're not being attacked. That I the said, timeline <laughs> here I want to see a show of hands. Who on this board knew that number 56 uh, you go was what it turned out to be? I think that, that this, my, solic my solicitor's information is complete and presented, and I would recommend that you move on to the next item. All right. Oh, no, no, I, no, I, no, I, no. Business no. manager, transportation director excuse information. Me, excuse me. This is the presiding officer. If he tells you that it's time to move on, yet. it's time to move on. We're moving on. Business manager. I want the public to know what this agenda item public is. Public wasn't allowed to know what I had to say because you interrupted. Speak to the public. All right, we're moving on. Business no, we're manager. not moving on. We are moving we on. We are not moving we on. We are. If you this is a serious on, point of order. This is a point of order. Well, what's the point of order? If it's a point of order, then you're showing you have to come forward with where we are parliamentarily improper in running this meeting. What's your point of order? When was it referred to the policy committee? That is committee? not a point of order. That is not a point of order. Thank you. Business manager, transportation. When was it discussed by the board? If this board is going to function in this black back doorway, we don't have a shot in I running this district. I just explained that it wasn't a back doorway. If you yeah. would have let me keep talking. So what I'm saying is this was on the January 16th agenda. If you you were provided with copies. I was copies. not. Yeah, I we are moving not. on. We are moving on. I was not. We are moving on. Business manager, transportation director information. Uh, this evening we have these uh, budget presentation for you. This was given initially to the Finance Committee, and now we're going to present it to you this evening. Um, the contents will be the preliminary expenditures from the February presentation, the five-year expenditure analysis, items currently in the budget, review of revenues from 23-24 school year, five-year revenue analysis, revenues what we know for the 24-25 school year, 
Bottom line using 2324 revenues, unknowns. Reminder that we are a multi county and we are subject to rebalancing, grant work, and next steps. The mission statement we, have, we obviously um, will be voting on this this evening for the 24 27 proposed in Southmoreland School District. We will provide a safe, supportive, and adaptive learning environment dedicating to nurturing individual growth and fostering active citizenship. Our mission is to inspire each student to achieve personal excellence, encouraging their journey as lifelong learners, responsible community members, engaged citizens in southwestern Pennsylvania and beyond. The vision statement, we're all familiar with the high quality learning for all. This is our proposed vision statement. Our vision at the Southmoreland School District is to cultivate lifelong learners ready for an ever-changing world fostering innovation and opportunities to maximize each student's potential. Time's up here. So now we are going to go to the um, expenditures from the February presentation. One thing that I want to bring your attention to, if you look at 67% <coughs> of, the, of the expenditures are for salary, wages, and employee benefits, 7.31% is for expenditures, debt services, and 1% of expenditures is for curriculum, resources, and technology. Of the budget, that encapsulates 75.31% of the budget. The five-year expenditure analysis, as you can see, um, we actually went down this year. Um, I know there are some people that have mentioned that our Budget has went up primarily the past several years, but think about the money that we had received from the federal government. We had received in CARES 300, 300 and some thousand dollars, in ESSERS 2, 1.5 million, in ESSERS 3, 3, 3 million 67,000 and some odd dollars. So that's, <coughs> that's part of the reason why the budget has went up, because we had those monies in which to spend. Obviously, those monies are coming to an end. One of the things that we thought would be um, interesting to show you is the consumer price index changes. So if we adjusted our budget for consumer price index for each year or the inflation rate, as you can see at the end for the 24-25 fiscal year, our budget should be reflecting in expenditures $37,136,923.51. We have currently budgeted $35,552,250, $552,250 in $552,250. So luckily we are underneath the CPI. Now we're kind of going to, now we're going to give you a remember when. So in 2014-15, the loaf of bread was $1.37. It's now $2.03. A gallon of milk was $3.55. It's now 396. A dozen of eggs is 201. It now says that they're 252, but with Easter they're a little bit higher right now. Um, the consumer price index was 233.707. That increased um, to 24.25 by 31.97 percent of 308.417, and the average tuition to a state university um, in in the state of Pennsylvania went up by 59.64% over that time period. Can I make a statement too? Because literally just was at the grocery store the other day, bottle of her bread, I paid almost $4 for it. Yeah. And it's, it's not even like a Good name bread. brand or anything. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous. Items that are currently in budget. Right now, we have the same staffing as our 23-24 school year without the ESSER-funded positions, the intervention positions. We have $200,000 for curriculum resources. We have $109,000 for technology refresh one-to-one -one devices. That was funded in the past few years by ESSER's funds. It now has to go into the general fund budget. Um, right now, there is a 15% increase on medical benefits. I did reach out to the consortium this past week. They tell me that they believe it's probably going to be 12 cents, or 12 cents, 12%, which makes me 
not what I was hoping for, but it's less um, less than what was budgeted, so that will help us in our overall budget. There's a 5% increase in CWCTC expenses, and I got that information from talking to the, to the business manager at the CWCTC. We reduced transportation by 10,000. We reduced purchase services by $103,400 due to a trend, and that's basically for um, the IU, even though there was going to be an increase over the, whenever I did my five-year analysis, I did see a trend where we're utilizing less and less services from the intermediate unit. The building budgets, and I, this did not make me very popular with the building, with the building principals, nor did it make me very popular with the other um, departmental heads. I held their budgets flat for the third year in a row. Um, and they do hear that word no from me. Calvin can attest to that. <laughs> Um, nothing has changed, and nothing, and I want to bring your attention to this, nothing has been budgeted for capital expenditures. So just keep that in mind. Can you Can explain what that consider, means? Yeah. Yes. Capital expenditures means things like um, whether or not we need paving done at, at the buildings, which we do. Whether or not we need, we did get some RTU units at this, at this building, however, we have aging RTU units at the high school. Yes, we're putting on, we're doing a capital expenditure of putting on a roof, which was sorely needed. However, there are RTU units that are aging as well. I mean, there, there are a multitude of items that um, the district needs. Thank you. You're welcome. So in other words, like if you were speaking to just the normal human out there, it'd be a savings account. Correct. So for example, just to give you an, a basic idea, if this is your home budget and you wanted to you needed a new roof but you didn't want to take it all out of one year's budget or you couldn't afford it all, all out of one year's budget you'd set so much aside each year towards that roof mm -hmm. so that when it came time for you to put a new roof on your house you didn't have to borrow money you could pull it out of your savings account if that's helpful yeah very Okay, this is the revenues for the 23-24 fiscal year. As you can see, um, the federal was 6.1% at that time. That was due to ESSER's funding. Obviously, that is going away. Our local effort is higher than our, is 42.2%, but the state, the highest local, the highest effort that we need is by, from the state 51.8%, which is why someone like myself gets very nervous whenever the state doesn't pass their budget timely because that, inf that affects our distributions from the state. The five-year state revenue analysis, we have um, on here the BEF, which, has in which was increased this year to 10901933 dollars um, the um, I can read this 1.6 million for <clears throat> for special education subsidy that went up a little bit again this year and I can tell you the ready to learn block grant that has been stagnant I believe since the 13 14 fiscal year whenever I went back and looked at it What we know for the 24-25 school year. Right now, the state has proposed basic edu education. Ed why can I speak? Education funding of eleven million sixty thousand eight hundred twenty-six dollars, which is one point four six increase. Of that, the 23-24 allocation was ten million nine hundred one nine thirty-three. We got an additional one hundred fifty-eight thousand eight hundred ninety-three dollars this year. You can see whenever you go into the PDE's website, there is an what is it called? Adequacy. adequacy grant of 800 and some odd thousand dollars. I did not put any of that into the budget. I can tell you whenever I was at PASBO, um, one of the things that the PDE um, speakers did tell us, they would suggest that we budget flat. They don't feel right now that the adequacy has any great um, Teeth, which in to be passed, which is why I've sent you 
the board members um, multitude times I've sent you guys information regarding from our local senator and asking you to please contact them and advocate for the school districts to see if we can get some money, some help from the state. The special education funding, that was an increase of $44,455 from last year. And then obviously, as I've stated, the, the ready to learn block grant has been stagnant for a multitude of years. When you look at the pie chart for the proposed revenues, as you can see, the federal is no, is no longer 6.1% and is now 2.1%. So we lost 4% of that. So we have to make up 4% of that somewhere. So that's why I'm hoping that some of the state funding that has been proposed in, governor, in the governor's budget will indeed be passed because they would de definitely be beneficial for us. Such things as, like I said, the adequacy grants and in particular the cyber charter um, caps that they had proposed, but right now, you know, it's anybody's guess as to whether or not that will that will be approved. The bottom line, using the revenues with the expenditures, currently we have thirty-five million five fifty-two two fifty in expenditures. The revenues come up to thirty-five three twenty-eight three zero one zero five, which is a proposed beginning deficit of two twenty-three nine forty-eight ninety-three. Obviously, this is something we will continue to work on to uh, lessen, but obviously, please keep in mind, once again, there isn't anything in the budget right now for capital expenditures. Can you repeat that deficit number again? Certainly. $2,923,948 and 93 cents. The deficit is 223000 That is correct. These are our unknowns. We have two contracts being negotiated currently. Cyber charter funding reform, that's what I was just talking about a few moments ago, asking you all to please contact your local legislators, your local senators, please advocate on our behalf. If that's something that gets passed, this could save our district $300,000. That would wipe out the deficit right there. Quick question with that. What, what should we be asking for? I mean, that might be a stupid question, but like- what Not a question. I think that's a valid question. Yeah, I like, think that's I a mean, very what valid exactly question. Are we, are we asking them to do? Is to what I would it? ask them to do is consider funding the cyber charter funding reform. I would ask them to consider funding, at least if they're not going to fund all of it, part of the adequacy funding related to the funding to the fair to the funding commission's work due to the recent court ruling, which is underfunding schools on the basic ed funding when they had that. Okay. And like I said, right now there's there's projecting that we could get up to $829,000 with that. In my wildest dreams, that would be <coughs> wonderful. However, do I think that's a possibility that we're gonna get that whole amount? From what I heard at PASBO, it doesn't sound likely. We do have PASBO members that you know attend all the meetings, all the budget meetings, and are out there advocating for school districts all the time, and um, listening to the to them speak. I made sure that, you know, anything that reflected the budget whenever I was at PASBO, I wanted to make sure that I was right there and I was in the front, one of the front seats because I wanted to learn and to find out what they had to say. Mrs. Ibrahimad, um, okay. typically um, Pennsylvania Association of School Administrators and then we are a, um, a member of PARS and I know it gets questioned, why do we spend the money on PARS? Um, PARS is the, the Pennsylvania Association of Rural and Small Schools um, who advocated for this lawsuit. Um, they do a really good job sending uh, information to districts about where the process is at the state, but they also do a really good job with advocacy. So I can reach out to them with that Lovely. specific question because I bet you they have a lot of good things yeah. that, that I could send to, to all of you in order to have in your toolbox whenever you're speaking with people uh, about the need for that. So I'll reach out to them. Is, yeah, because even my thought is like, I mean, sure, I'm a school board director, but like, they're a senator, they're, uh, you know, a representative of the state, like, what do they care to hear from me? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, I feel like more of like just a peon, even though I'm as, as a school director, you know, so I'd, I'd rather have more information to advocate for than less. So, yeah, yeah for sure. I'll add that to my list of things to do. Okay, yeah. thank you. That would be great. Thank yeah. you. 
And the medical insurance rates will not be released until the end of March. Um, as I'd said, I currently budgeted 15%. Talked with them this week. They believe that it's going to be 12%, but hasn't been voted on yet. And unfortunately, that's still a big chunk for us to endure. So Pam, if you budgeted 15% and it's only 12%, that should take care of the deficit and there should be no tax increase, right? That should help with the deficit. Like I said, still keep in mind, there aren't any capital expenditures in the current budget. Well, but I'm just saying, if you bud over budgeted in health care and the budget is $223,000 short, that's going to be a significant portion of Absolutely. That. So that we would happen. have a balanced budget with no tax increase. We would be close. Good. Okay, so we want to remind you of the multi-county rebalancing. We are one of the 78 school districts that have two counties. And what happens with that? Whatever we put, um, this talks about the reminder. PA school code section 672.1, school districts lying in more than one county or in more than one municipality, there's a limitation on total tax revenues. It calculates different tax rates based on STEB market value in each county. The state tax equalization form was established by the General Assembly, Act 447, PL 1046, 1947, to compensate for the lack of assessment uniformity in statewide distributing school subsidies. The primary function of STEB will determine the annually aggregate market value of taxable real estate property in each political subdivision or school district throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. STEB is to establish common level ratio assessed value to market value for each county prior to the calendar year. Now when you look at what transpired last year, um, last year the starting rates for Fayette County were increased the moment I put in the actual property assessments. What I can tell you about this year is that the Westmoreland County assessed values went down. Therefore, much like Fayette's went up last year, before we did anything, I anticipate Westmoreland's will go up due to rebalancing. And that is nothing that we, anyone here sitting here did. It is just dealing with property values only. Our next steps, obviously advocate, 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 please, for the proposed pro governor's budget on cyber charting, funding reform, and adequacy investment amount. We're going to determine the amount of medical benefits rate that should come in March and April, the multi-county rebalancing rates for our starting point, that will be the end of April, determine the increases to ongoing collective bargaining, hopefully the beginning of May. The Homestead Farmstead exemption, we'll get that the beginning of May. Determine the federal funding amounts, Title I through IV, mid-April. Determine capital improvements and possible cuts, April and May. We will have committee meetings and monthly board presentations. The final proposed budget will be on May 21st, and the final budget adoptions will be on June 24th. And that's so hard. Most likely, nothing will even be passed by then. For the state? Yeah. It's not looking promising. And that's what we talked about. Um, in fact, the, the one gentleman from PDE was like, because it was all business managers in the meeting at PASBO, and he's like, am I going to get out of here in one piece? Because mm. we said to him, look, you know, we're, we're told to try and keep the fund balance you know, we're, we're told to not raise taxes, we're told to do this, we're told to do that, but we're dealing with unknowns whenever we're budgeting because the state doesn't get their budget that's supposed to be done by June 30th. Nine Never chances is. out of 10, it's not looking promising this year. And you said our, our proposed income was 33 million, or no, 35 I didn't say million. 35 million. 35 million. Mm -hmm. And that is based on not counting anything from the state, right? I mean, any addition from the state. Correct. Then we're in really good shape. Yes. 
We have no tax increase to worry about. Well, it all depends upon if you guys want to do something with capital, capital expenditures. I mean, that's the problem that we ran into whenever I came here. There was a multitude of items that were not attended. It's much like your home. You can pay me now. You can you can pay now or you can pay later. And unfortunately, later is typically more expensive. So you know, I mean, that's not up to me. That it's it, that is definitely up to the nine people that sit on this board. But you know, we obviously will will recommend things that we believe to keep our kids. And, and I'll say this again, as I've said it many times before, safe, warm, and dry. Because before, I believe, before they can learn, they have to be in a, an environment that's safe, warm, and dry. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Pam. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. CWCTC report. So beginning of the month cwctc hosted their annual career fair they had over 90 businesses trade unions and post-secondary schools um, that was about 175 representatives um, so it really gave the students that participated a lot of good information on job opportunities and in the current field uh, what's out there uh, the other update is a new student open house for cwctc is may 20th coming up for the next school year that's all I have. Thank you. And I did hear something like they're like maxed, like they are they are booming, aren't they? They have more applic applications than they do openings right now. So that's I mean that's fantastic, mm -hmm. you know. But like, wow, that's awesome. Uh, WIU report. The last meeting of the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit was held on February twenty seventh, twenty twenty four. The meeting started at twelve noon. And it lasted until 9.20 p.m. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You needed lunch and dinner. We, um, went to the, we went to the IU at noon. We visited the Clareview School. And this is a building that will probably close in 1935. So the goal of the IU is to establish what is called re regional classrooms, where they would provide the same services in the student's own school district or if they have to, the IU administration headquarters are so big that they could move Clearview over to the regular IU building and stop using Clearview. That's a major, major long-term problem that they are facing. There were um, breakout units with the administrators, and um, what they did is they had roundtable discussions. Uh, each of us got to attend three of them. I met with the reading people, the student service supervisor, and the um, uh, non-public school teachers. We have, they have a huge number of, of non-public schools that they service, something like 2,500 kids. Uh, the second Rice was with um, Mr. Rice. He talked about school safety and security, new legislation that was being uh, involved, and he talked about their training costs. And also, there's a need for mobile units that people can communicate. We talked with uh, buildings and grounds about uh, custodial and maintenance, and he repeated that it, it's really difficult to get anybody to work. We met with the Early Childhood Program. They are now servicing 1,650 kids between the ages of three and five. From birth to three, that is a county program. Um, they have an evaluation team that goes in to look at developmental issues, speech and language, the needs for PT and OT, um, occupational therapy, therapy and, and physical therapy. And um, they do write IEPs for these kids. There are 17 teachers and uh, 12 OT, PT, OT contractors. Uh, at the general meeting then, um, there were there are 17 um, representatives on the IU board, 12 were present and five were absent. They went through um, a long, long, long presentation of their budget. And there was a long, long, long discussion about a policy regarding their fund balance. Now, they claim that they've never had a policy for their fund balance. And uh, th th a lot of people don't think the IU should have one. <laughs> But it went on, you know, on and on and on. 
Uh, we had a presentation about PLAY. That is a, um, a, a teacher training program that is under the, con under the direction of Ted Han Hamhill. And then we had committee meetings. I'm on the Student Services uh, Committee, and it is the largest program that the IV has. It, it contains all sorts of special ed. We had an executive session after that, and then we continued uh, with the public board meeting, and it was adjourned at 920. Thank you. PSBA Legislative Liaison Report. Who is that? Nothing. All right, thank you. Uh, committee reports. We'll start with uh, buildings and grounds. Mrs. O'Rear, Chairperson. Um, we have to set our next meeting. Um, nothing else has been discussed since our last, since prior. Um, we talked about the. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we can't did, oh, move your mic up. We Steve can't hear you. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm all relaxed back here. Um, <laughs> um, so we haven't had a meeting since our last, um, in the last board meeting. And I know we discussed the um, chiller. The chiller. And I, I don't know, were you getting more um, information from the couple of the companies we were talking about? OK, did, were those relayed yet, or we're still working on those? I think there'll be discussion on that soon, won't there? As far as the chiller itself? Yeah. Yes, I have everything in. Okay. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> so, other than that, then, yeah, to right. our next meeting. Thank you. Uh, finance, district operations, and transportation. Um, we met probably February 1st. February 1st. Mm -hmm. And uh, the presentation. And, and I'm sorry, March 5th, too. And March. March 5th. March 5th. Uh, the, the presentation you saw tonight um, from the business manager was the exact presentation we saw on the finance committee. Um, so everything that we learned there, you all learned tonight. Uh, personnel, policy, and academics, Mrs. Geyer. Uh, we haven't met since January 30th. Our next meeting is April 23rd. Okay, thank you. Non-academic, athletics, and extracurricular, Mr. Shipley. Uh, nothing to report. Uh, April 2nd, our next meeting. School safety and security, Mr. Yutzi. Nothing to report. Thank you. Can I correct one thing? I misspoke and said that Clearview would close in 1935. Mr. Olson said it's 2035, 10 years. <laughs> no, we were all, we all looked and we were like, <laughs> did she say that right? <laughs> 2035. We figured. All right. Long day. Student reports. Oh, she was at that meeting so long. <clears throat> South Portland students participated with 16 other school districts in the Senator for a Day Seminar for Future Leaders hosted by Senator Pat Stefano. The seminar gives students an opportunity to take on the role of senators to see how the legislative process works. Students are divided into Senate committees to discuss bills, take positions on legislation, draft laws, and meet in full session to present, debate, and vote on the legislation drafted by the various committees. Rather than reading about the process, they get to be a part of it, helping shape the policies and laws that affect their lives. Thank you to all of the panelists and to Senator Stefano for hosting this event. 44 members of South Portland's Interact Club, an organization sponsored by the Scottsdale Rotary, dedicated a day to volunteering with Habitat for Humanity, <clears throat> inspired by Junior Reese Gunderson's experience in Thailand. Together, they tackled tasks like hanging drywall, digging drains, and priming rooms for painting. Their efforts not only contributed to the community, but also fostered teamwork, empathy, and a sense of global citizenship among the students. Through this hands-on experience, they learn the value of service and the impact of making a difference, both locally and internationally. Congratulations to junior Faith Garstecki, who not only won at the local level, but also clinched second place at the district level in the prestigious Voice of Democracy competition. Faith's success demonstrates her exceptional talent and dedication, showcased through her speech crafted as part of an assignment in advanced placement language and composition. Faith represented our school community with pride on the national stage. <clears throat> On March 12th, Ms. Farrell and Mrs. Hummelstein took several special education students to the Westmoreland County Youth Conference. The conference focused on student independence, adult living skills, community resources, employment opportunities, and transportation options. And on March 13th, Mrs. Redinger and Ms. Hummelstein took several special education students to a WISS job shadowing opportunity. On March 15th, Ms. Farrell began community-based instruction, CBI, with her students. 
CBIs will include sites such as Brillhart's Hardware, Walmart, and etc. Community-based instruction is an approach to teaching functional skills to special education students in a natural setting. It involves taking students out of the school setting and into the community to teach them real-life skills that will help them live more independently. Community-based instruction trips push our students out into the greater community. Yeah. However, they are not field trips. Just to clarify, a CBI trip has fewer students, aligns with a student's IEP goals by way of supporting their transition plan, and typically targets a well-defined objective. A field trip, on the other hand, is more about fun, connecting to the current curriculum, and tends to have larger groups. Both have a purpose for students, but a CBI trip is a functional way to practice life skills. Congratulations to senior choral students Nolan Blaze and Christopher Headley on their outstanding performance in the PMEA Region 1 Choral Festival held at Mars High School from March 6th to the 8th. Dr. Hannah Carr, originally from Ireland, currently on the faculty of Cutstown University, was the guest conductor. It was an amazing honor and opportunity for these two talented tenors. Nolan finished first chair in the Tenor Two section and advances onto the state festival that will be held at the Erie Bayfront Convention Center from April 18th to the 20th. Nolan is the first Southmoreland choral student to qualify for the state festival all three years of high school. Congratulations to both Nolan and Chris. And on March 4th, 22 students, including myself and Faith, attended the Westmoreland Interscholastic Reading Team competition at Seton Hill University. The reading team read 30 books in preparation for this quiz-style competition against 27 teams from around Westmoreland and Allegheny counties. In total, our reading team traveled home with four round ribbons after winning against Greensburg Central Catholic, Penn Hills, Franklin Regional, and Penn's Manor. And congratulations to our February Spirit of Southmoreland winner, Nolan Blaze, and our Scotty Scholar winner, Carly Cameron. Thank you. Is he at the high school? Nolan, you're just racking it up, buddy. <laughs> Great job. Oh, and you all didn't mention how well the musical of Mamma Mia went. And I think you all, along with the rest of your um, colleagues there who did an outstanding job Thank in the you. musical. You're very welcome. As always, if you guys want to exit, feel free. Miss out on all this fun? <laughs> Okay, our, our next section is school board. Um, meeting minutes. The board is asked to approve the following meeting minutes. Uh, February 20th, 2024, discussion voting meeting. February 29th, 2024, special meeting. So do. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, America 250 PA resolution. I want to roll call vote. What's that? We, need, we want a roll call vote on those minutes. Mr. Kiefer was denied the right to speak on an agenda item, and it was not stated. What? All right. All right. Roll call. Mr. Estepitter? No. Mr. Yutzi? Yes. Dr. Fike? No. Mr. Friend? Yes. Mrs. Geyer? Yes. Mr. Grabiak? Yes. Mrs. O'Rear? Yes. Do we always report who, who speaks? So the minutes typically should just be able to pro provide a synopsis of the meeting and in particular the action that was taken. So I, you know, I don't know that there was, in my view, there wasn't anything flawed with the minutes. They don't always note um, comprehensively what a, a person says it. In right. Comment. That's what I, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's not intended to be a verbatim uh, right. transcript of what's said at your meeting. Quick synopsis. Okay. Yes. Mr. Olson? No. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Six yes, three no. All right, thank you. Uh, America 250 PA resolution. Uh, the board is asked to approve the attached America 250 PA resolution. No, no. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Um, next is policies. No, <coughs> next section is policies. No items for this month. Section after that is personnel. Uh, personnel log. The board is asked to approve the personnel log for March 19, 2024 as attached. All salaries are included and all clearances are current and on file with the administration. So do. Second. 
Second. Discussion. Yeah, so in our, like if I pull it up on here, it's still the blank. I'm requesting that item number three be pulled for discussion for a separate roll call vote. Yeah, it's, uh, so I don't know if it's, if it's shown to the public as blank or not, like if they would be looking at. One second. That's what I was asking her. What are we waiting for? Hmm? Just the, I think we're trying to make sure that the personnel log was updated to include the names. I'm just asking for, for a, a right. and, and you'll you get vote on the rest of it and then you use this item separately is what I'm requesting right with the roll call and that's understood I think we're just trying to refresh sure that the good. public okay. has okay okay so um, all those in favor of approving the personnel log without item three correct item three without without yeah, without it with, yeah that's what I said without item three um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, so roll call vote for item three. Uh, I want discussion. Oh, sorry, discussion for item three. This is a $70,000 job. The salary is $40,000, health care is $20,000, and ten more thousand for all kinds of insurance and and you know, vision, dental, life, uh, there's FICA, there's PSERS. In fact, that's probably a minimum. It's probably closer to a $75,000 job. This is not necessary for us to increase our expenses in this district to add another person to do this work. We have plenty of personnel who can absorb these duties. I would just like to say that um I think that the way that you're commenting is disparaging to all of the administrative assistants we've had. I know that several of them have expressed that they feel attacked and not valued based upon these conversations in regard to this. We are not adding a position. This is replacing a position that somebody left that went to a different position in a different district. So this isn't adding a position. Um, I think our administrative assistants are all very valuable. And I think that when you're saying things like, this is a $70,000 secretary. It's just very disparaging. And I don't think that, personally, that's what I do for my job. And I just feel like you're just speaking down to anybody whose job is just a secretary as if they're not important. And I don't think that's fair to any of the people that are employed in this district and that work hard. I also have stated that you think that these duties can be reassigned, but just based upon reading job descriptions, you've never gone in and worked with each one of our administrative assistants on a daily basis to see what they do every single day. So just to look at a piece of paper and somebody's duties and be able to evaluate how they spend their day is not a fair analysis of what they do during the day. Has any administrator looked at that? Any of those jobs to consolidate them? Has anyone looked at that? I believe when they provided us with a description of what they all do, that's what they did for you. When you asked about whether these duties could be reassigned. All we got was just job descriptions. We did, I've never heard anybody say they went through and evaluated the jobs. I've, I've went through twice in my time here, at the beginning of my tenure here in last September, um, and then again last May to June. <laughs> There was a shifting of responsibilities between administrative assistants. What about, what about the free time that we gained because we purchased the transportation program? I don't think there was free time gained. As somebody who knows that program pretty well, I implemented it in another district. That wasn't free time gained. It's just being more efficient with our routes, which why in is there, helps us. Why is there a better. need for eight administrative secretaries? Why do you feel you're qualified to decide who what these people do. Why is there a need for eight administrators? Because we're, we're running a business here. We're not, we're, we're running a no, business. We're running and a that's school. what it takes to run a business. Running a I think school. what you're so insinuating. So why don't you get on board and, and you know, get real. I we're think that what school. you're, we're running I'm going to interrupt also. you. 
I think that what you're insinuating is that all of our administrative assistants are just sitting around all day twiddling their thumbs and they feel very hurt by that Don't you accusation. Dare tell me what I'm insinuating. That's I have never said those words. Well, you're the only one who continues to bring it up. That is the vibe that you're giving is that you think that they have all this free time I don't to give vibes, payroll. I give facts. Okay, well, uh, so. The people that we are considering for suspicion, <laughs> the, do they all meet the criteria? Payroll experience, associate degree, do they all? Yeah. Question. Yes, the individual that we, inter well, all the individuals last night did have the associate's degree, one even had a bachelor's. Um, I can tell you that the candidates this time weren't as robust because obviously the salary isn't as high as it once was. Um, this individual, however, that we are recommending for hire, and that is part of the reason why we have uh, put on the board uh, for a 90 day, as a 90 day probationary period, because you know if that person can't handle it, we need to know sooner rather than later and make the appropriate changes. Um, she does have payroll experience, she does have accounts payable, accounts receivable experience. So she has been an office manager office. before, which she ran an office on her set. I mean, obviously it was, it was a much smaller scale, How many employees? but she, but she does have some experiences. Yes. How many employees? How many employees was at their firm? You were, you were welcome to come to yeah, the interviews last night. I did. I do think she said, um, at a previous engagement. Okay. It was roughly like, <clears throat> 100, 150. What specific payroll experience was? This is why nobody wants initiated. to apply for this job because they're being publicly attacked. Yes, yes, and I think, I think that's kind of where we're going. Because, because, because I don't have to attack. can it. You're allowed right. to talk this whole meeting. Yep, we're going to call this the question. Um, so we're going to go to the vote. Well, if I'm, five of I'm, you are ready to cut off debate and move to vote, you can do that. Yep. I do want to make a motion. So if we Hold want on. to. Sorry. We call, called the question. Oh, sorry. I need five people in support of called a question to go to the vote and end debate on this topic. All those in favor? Okay, say that one more time because I have a thought in my head and I wasn't. Yep, so I called the question. That means we end debate and just move to the vote because obviously the debate is getting us nowhere. It's to shut us up. Um, hmm. It's to shut us up. I need five I people. I need to ask you to be respectful. I need five people to be in support of the call to question to end the debate to move to the vote because the debate is obviously going nowhere. So all those in favor of calling the question now and moving to the vote, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Roll call vote. <coughs> We're voting on the item now. Th nope, this is for the call to question. Okay. I, okay. I couldn't discern who said what. All right, you want to explain the yes or no for them? Yeah, so a yes vote uh, calls the question and you move immediately to, to vote, a no vote means that uh, debate and discussion continues. Okay. Mr. Yotzi? Yes. Dr. Faik? What are you voting on now? We're voting whether we go to, to, to calling the question. I thought that was already a roll call, I mean a voice vote. There's a voice vote, but I don't think anyone could figure out where five votes Oh, you're were. clarifying the voice vote. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay, no. Mr. Freund? Yes. Mrs. Geyer? Yes. Mr. Grabiak? Yes. Mrs. O'Rear? Yes. Mr. Olson? No. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Ossipiter? No. Six yes, three no. Roll call vote. Sure. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to roll call vote. Item number three from our personnel log. So a yes is to hire uh, the uh, position at number three, and a no is to not hire. Dr. Fike? No. Mr. Freund? Yes. Mrs. Geyer? Yes. Mr. Grabiak? Yes. Mrs. Arrear? Yes. Mr. Olson? No. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Sipiter? No. Mr. Yutzi? Yes. Six yes, three no. Uh, psychology intern, the board is asked to approve a grant funded school psychology <laughs> intern position for the 24-25 school year at no cost to the district. I do. Second. Aye. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uncompensated leave. The board is asked. Call vote, please. I have no idea what this person's going to do. 
you said there won't be a job description. Well, Dr. Fike, you're the only person that voted no, so I, I think the minutes will reflect that you were the Right, no. go on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the board is asked to approve the following uncompensated leave of absences. All required paperwork has been submitted and is on file with the administration. Uh, employee number 2583, effective 215-24. So do. Second. Discussion. Is this one day? Yes. Just one day. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? I had a, oh, aye, sorry. And a discussion. Um, so with some latest news that we just found out about, I'm going to ask that we no longer put employee identification numbers or any kind of identity that shows which possible employee something may be on um, anything public. One of the issues, well, one of the problems will be, and we can talk about that, is, is how do you track things? I will say, I looked at the right to know law, an employee specifically exempt from disclosure is uh, employee numbers and other confidential personal identification numbers. So that was, that was provided in error, and, and I think we can ask that that information be redacted or that we could provide new, new records that would redact that information. But, I don't even, th well. But I think you're, you're, the larger issue for the board is going to be then how do we, if we don't use those numbers, and how, how do you track things like these leaves? Because you'll have to come up with another number, essentially. I think the easiest way is to redact the right to know. Right. Well, yeah, but I agree. moving forward, sure, yes. Yep. But unfortunately, it's already out. So, I mean, we can call a spade a spades, and we need to do something about that. Okay. Because that's, that's something that's on us. Um, FMLA leave. The board is asked to approve the following FMLA leave of absences. All required paperwork has been submitted and is on file with the administration. Employee number 3308, effective March 4th, 2024 to, Mar to March 3rd, 2025. Intermittent. So do. Second. Discussion. Has this position been filled? It says intermittent. What? It says intermittent. Well, is, do you have somebody who's there intermittent? For, it's a year long. It's a year long, Stephanie. That's how FMLA works, is uh -huh. you're approved. Well, they would have to have somebody every time for a yeah. year. Every time there'd be an absence, there'd be a sub. Yeah. You have a sub every time for a year. I can't, I can't promise that a year in advance. What happens? We do our best to fill it every time it gets posted as an absence. Can we deny someone's FMLA leave? Uh, well, I mean, only if it doesn't meet the qualifications, but there are qualifications in certain conditions which require intermittent leave. Right. Um, but that's... Administration's no, gone through. That's not our decision to decide whether FMLA paperwork has been put incorrectly or if whatever is on that FMLA is a deciding factor of us of whether to approve or not approve <clears throat> that. Correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, you, you delegate to your administration the review of that FMLA documentation to make sure it meets the requirements and then they present it to you for approval. That's it. But I'm, I'm saying like whatever is in that FMLA paperwork, that is something that we do not see. Correct. Okay. So here's the other question I guess I have. So if somebody is entitled to FMLA, which any employee over a year in any aspect from my understanding um, is entitled to FMLA, now, that is... They have the required hours of work. Right, correct, yes. Now, that shouldn't be a decision of the board if they are entitled to it. So if I, it's already been approved by administration, yeah. why, why does that get brought to the board? So typically, um, school boards will put it on their agenda just to acknowledge that the board, that the administration has recommended that the board approve it so that the board formally approves these things, but they've already been <coughs> pre-vetted by administration. So it's, it did, more, it's more like recognition than actual approval. Sure, sure. Okay. It just concerns me because, you know, FMLA is, is something serious. It's usually medical related or mental health related whatsoever. And then, and then we put it out there to the public along with employee ID numbers. And I am not okay with that. I don't know if anybody else is, but I just don't think that, that we should be following that line of order anymore. Mm. Maybe something to take note on and we can... You know, go from there. Yes. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, 
Uh, extended school year pay rates. The board is asked to approve the following pay rates for the 2024 extended school year positions. Uh, the following rates are 1.5 times the regular ESY rates. Teacher is $45 an hour. Paraprofessional is $23.61 an hour. So do. Second. Discussion. What are regular e ESY stands for extended school year? Okay, it says so these rates are one and a half times a regular extended school year. Is that what that they're, says? They're one and a half times the regular curriculum rate and one and a half times the regular rate for paraprofessional. But it's not uh, regular stated. salary rates. It's the extended school year rate. The way it's stated, it's, it's the way it's stated. Times. It says what yeah, the, the way extended year rate. The way it should be stated is their regular curriculum rate. But there is no curriculum rate for a paraprofessional. So it's just. So the regular rate. rates used to be half of that? No. No. No, the current curriculum, the current curriculum rate is $30 an hour. I guess my question, what's a regular ESY rate? What, what is that? that? That's a typo. It should just be regular rate. Well, it oh, it's says, a typo. whereas article yeah. XXIV, I'm not up to, I'm not okay. brushed up I on my it. whatever. It. Section F provides. So I'm going to throw a motion in to amend okay. what it reads. Just regular rate. So we can move on. Okay. Um, and have it state the following rates are 1.5 times the regular yeah. rates, okay. not necessarily ESY rates. All right, so we're going to vote on that motion first. Is that Can I get a second? that article section referencing back to the the curriculum rate in the CBA. So if it's referencing that section, then it's referencing the correct, right? It wouldn't be an ESY rate. I mean, it's not a big deal. All right, we have a motion to change the wording there. Do I have a second? So moved. Uh, all those in favor of changing Aye. the wording. Aye. 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 And what Opposed. should it state? We're just taking the ESY out of it. We're taking the ESY out, okay. Yep. Okay, now back to the motion. Um, all those in favor of the extended school year rates? As amended. As amended. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, early retirement incentive program. The board is asked to approve an early retirement incentive plan, 2024 ERIP, <coughs> for qualified SEA staff members. So do. Need a second. Second. Discussion. I have a question for the uh, solicitor. He told me when I was speaking that this was strictly quiet, secret. No, what I told you was you cited numbers when you were at the podium speaking as a public citizen. Well, they're my numbers. They came from executives. No, 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 no. Those are my numbers. All right. If they're if my I, numbers. They didn't come from If you from and I anybody. disagree about this, it's really not germane to the motion that's on the floor. Well, why, we, I don't think we can vote on this because you said it's not. Oh, Dr. Fike. Yeah, Mr. Lucas. Grow up. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Opposed? No. Roll no. no. call, please. Yeah. Mr. Friend? Yes. Mrs. Geyer? Yes. Mr. Grabiak? Absolutely. Mrs. Arrear? Yes. Mr. Olson? No. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Ossipiter? No. Mr. Yutzi? Yes. Dr. Fike? No. 6 3. Thank you. Next section is education. The board is asked to approve the 2024-2027, sorry, 2024 through 2027 comprehensive plan as attached. So do. I need a second. Second. Discussion. I'm going to vote no because in both the mission statement and the vision statement, the words academic achievement and academic growth are not included as part of the plan for this school district for the next three years. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. No. Roll call vote, please. Ms. Geyer stepped out. Shall I wait? Oh, well, we gotta wait till she comes back if you want to. Oh, yeah, she ran to the restroom.
Did we outline anything that changed in this from previous year other than our mission statement? Oh, there were several things that uh, it, 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 it totally revamped. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. I did at the last meeting um, include a graphic that talked about the, the four main goals of the plan. Mm -hmm. I, I, do on, on I do remember mm -hmm. that. Okay. I just want to make sure that that is because it wasn't set up like you you did All right, show yeah. us. So that's why I'm like, well, let me ask. Stephanie, we're, Stephanie, we're going to roll call vote on um, the comprehensive plan. The board has asked to approve the 2024 through 2027 comprehensive plan as attached. We're going to roll call vote that. Sorry, I thought I picked a safe time to go to the bathroom. That's all right. We already did there first. Mrs. Geyer. Oh, yes. No. Mr. Grabiak. Yes. Mrs. O'Rear. Yes. Mr. Olson. No. Mr. Shipley. Yes. Mr. Recipiter. No. Mr. Yutzi. Yes. Dr. Fike. No. Mr. Frund. Yes. 6-3. Student discipline agreements. The board is asked to approve the following student discipline agreements. Um, number 2023-2024-04. Number 2023-2024-05. Number 2023-2024-06. In number 2023-2024-07. So do. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry, I do have a discussion. Um, why do items such as these need to be brought to public? Why is... Because the board has to approve um, the... And I don't want to discuss the terms of the discipline agreement. We can talk about that in the sure, yes. session. Right. But certainly... Um, but the, only the board has the authority to do what is contained in the discipline agreement. Separately, um, it's important, I think, for school boards to understand kind of how administration is dealing with certain student discipline issues so that you're not sort of separated from that. Okay. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Did that vote include the renewal of the K-5 math curriculum? No. It's no. Okay. This is student discipline. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, this is just the student discipline. Yes. Um, okay, uh, no more discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, we already voted on that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry, right, yeah, my discussion came. <laughs> All right. Um, the board is asked to approve the request of Larry Ansel to escort students to the Pennsylvania State University's Agricultural and Animal Science Department State College, PA and to New Holland, PA, to tour the Case New Holland Manufacturing Plant, April 29th through 30th, 2024, as attached. Any so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, discussion? Yes. So where it states at least one chaperone for every 10 students, um, I would assume that that would have to come through the board to make sure that they are vetted and they have clearances if it's somebody who's not within our district, correct? Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Student service agreements. The board is asked to approve the following annual student service agreements for the 2023-2024 school year. Adelphi Village, Inc. So do. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The board is asked to approve Title I plans for SPC and SES for submission to the Pennsylvania Department of Education. So do. Need a second. Second. Discussion. Is that for next year? Actually, these are for this year. Um, in order for us to submit, they, they change the way it's submitted to the state. And in order for us to even submit it to the state, we need an affirmation statement from the full board <laughs> saying that you guys have reviewed it. So I can't even hit go unless I also upload a document that says that you discussed it on this date and approved it on this date. I was wondering how that was done. Yeah, it's first year. So, okay, so this information is from this past year. Correct. Okay, where you have data for English language arts, and it says K students are 88% proficient on reading skills, data collected from MAPS and Acadians. Who, who oversees MAPS and Acadians? Building it's, principals and the teachers, all they all use that regularly in all of their data meetings. Okay, and they're the ones that submit the data for that, or are they the ones that transmit it? Well, they'll just, they'll get, um, so once the students take the assessments, they'll access the data 
from whatever program, either NWEA or Acadians, to determine how many of their students are on target or how many are not. And then they use that data to make their intervention groups along the way. Okay. And then we also use that up through our elementary as well, that the same... NWA all the way up through eighth grade, yes. Okay. And including our keystone areas of the high school. Our high school kids do maps testing too, yeah. right? In, in math and ELA, in Algebra 1 and ELA, not math, I should say. Asha. All right. Um, no more discussion. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, extended school year schedule. The board is asked to approve the 2024 extended school year ESY schedule. Um, SES dates and time, June 24th, 2024 to June 27th, 2024, July 8th, 2024 to July 18th, 2024. Uh, Southmoreland Middle School and Southmoreland High School dates and time, July 8th, 2024 to July 25th, 2024. Times for teachers, 8.30 to 12.30. Times for students, 9 to noon. So do. Second. Discussion. Do we have any, do we have any teachers lined up for this yet? Or we're just going to make this sure. This is the first step. Out of this is the first step. Okay, <coughs> gotcha. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And Renewal I've of K-5 math curriculum, my math. The board is asked to approve the purchase of a three-year subscription of K-5 math curriculum from McGraw-Hill LLC at a cost of $69,652.87. These resources will be paid for out of the budgeted ARP ESSER three funds. So do. Second. Discussion. Is this a new program? No. Okay. So how long has it been in effect? We, the first time I think the district got it here was 2018. When, 18? 2018. Okay. So we had options. We could either. Hey, I have a real concern about this. We've had this math program for five years, okay? <laughs> okay. At this point in time, in third grade, 44% of our kids are failing math proficiency. In grade four, 63% are failing math proficiency. In grade five, 51% are failing math proficiency. If this program was going to help, why are we getting such scores? I'm concerned about the quality of this program when I look at the outcome of these, these proficiencies. Sure, I could speak to I could speak to the quality of the resource because, as part of my previous responsibilities at the IU, um, I was used as a consultant with school districts in order to help to determine efficiency of resources and other. I don't. I didn't hear you, Jason. You said I was I was used to help districts identify resources to use for their students. Um, so one of the resources we use to help with that, um, there's a program called Ed Reports that kind of looks at everything involving the entire resource to determine whether it is aligned. Um, with the standards, whether it is aligned to the standards of, math, of mathematical practice, and whether it's rigorous enough uh, for our students. And I'll tell you that, because um, and I'm speaking this specifically because last meeting I was, um, I was kind of told, how come you didn't ask anybody else about a resource that our, our teachers identified? So I wanted to make sure that I, I show you that um, there are resources out there that we go ahead and we look and we refer to. If it was a resource that was not rigorous, if it was a resource that was not aligned, um, if it was a resource that did not meet the standards uh, of what we needed for our kids, it wouldn't be recommended in front of the board. So why hasn't it worked for five years? I mean, you've been using this program for five years, and half the kids are failing. I mean, I, I would think that there would be some improvement from that. We were shut down. What? I said, I think because because of two of those years, we were completely shut down, and we weren't giving high quality of learning to all. Well, COVID started four years ago, so we're at least two years in now, and that would be grades four and five, if nothing else, and one of them 63% failed, one 51% failed. I'm just questioning how good this program is, because when you evaluate a program, you want to see what the outcome is, right? What the results are. And I'm looking at the results. Sure. And that's why I, I'm, I'm giving you the study results, too. So the research behind it says that the focus and coherence is, is um, it meets or exceeds the standards, and the rigor of mathematical practices meets or exceeds the standards. But it's not working. I mean, I'm just going by the data we have. I am, and I'm, I'm going by the research behind the resource as well, which is what you guys asked me about well, yeah, last time. Yeah, yes. I'm sure their research is going to say they're good, yeah. But it's, it's not from the book. Well, like but that research is not from the book. It's from, it's from an outside company. This is $70,000. Mm -hmm. 
you know, isn't there a better math program that these kids could, might help them more? So I will tell you that at the conclusion of three years, we are going to need to adopt a completely different resource. Um, and that's going to take some time and patience in order to you do it. You said in the next three years? Yes. In the next three years, yes. yeah. Okay, I think we're on the same page, Jason. I think we're looking at what is the best way for these kids to learn math, because this is not all of it. This is not the whole answer. Am I right? This, this is, is uh, if, if you're talking about somebody who thinks math is near and dear to his heart, that's me. Um, I'm the one who argues all the time that we spend a heck of a lot of time and resources on ELA intervention and none on math. Um, so I, I believe this to be, and I know school districts find this resource to be effective. You're, you're satisfied with this? If I wasn't satisfied with it, I wouldn't be bringing okay, it Okay, you're board. satisfied with it, okay. How long, 120 days for? This is for a three year period. And then at the um, conclusion of three years, this resource will not be available anymore. So, and well, I mean, McGraw Hill is, I mean, it's our old textbooks, anyways. It's, so. it's reputable, yeah. yeah. Um, now, if we vote this down, what do we do? If we vote this down, then I got to start a whole new process with all of the kindergarten teachers, I'm sorry, kindergarten through fifth grade teachers to identify a whole new math resource. And then they're going to need to get trained on that whole new resource okay. prior to next school year. And then my other question would be, um, have you gotten feedback from teachers saying that this is probably the best program that they like? That yeah, I asked them whether or not they wanted to renew this resource or to start that work now on finding a new resource. They would rather, um, they would rather use this resource now and look at our master schedule a little bit and change the way we do things inside the classroom for effectiveness rather than changing both to see what matters. Because right, that'd be a hot mess. You can't mess. change two variables and figure out what worked. Right. Totally math that. Sorry. <laughs> no, nope. but it's true. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, no more discussion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, next section is finance. Monthly board treasurer's report. The board is asked to approve the treasurer's report as attached. So do. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Oh, I had a question. Aye. Okay, all right, go ahead. Do you have a question? No, go ahead. I'll, oh. I'll ask it on the next document. Maybe it, maybe it fits there. Maybe that one doesn't. I don't know what right. it is. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good. Uh, <clears throat> the board is asked to approve the general fund board summary report as attached. So do. Second. Discussion. Where yeah, just, do you show the loan payments on the four, the two hundred and some thousand dollar loan? Where are they listed in the documents? That is, sorry about that. That is in the fifty one hundred series. It has. Um, there are some other items that are in there as well. Yeah. But that's where it is. Do you pay it monthly? How do you pay it? Oh, no, we pay it twice a year. What? Twice, twice a year, year we are invoiced. Once a year? Twice. Twice a year? Correct. Twice a year. And what does that amount to, the two payments for a year? Um, I know for next year, it's around $2.6 million. Mm. I just couldn't find it, Pam. It's $2.6 million on that loan. No, well, it's on oh, that all whole of thing, the whole all thing. of them, all of them, not just on one. You don't month. know on that one though. Um, I know I just got a bill for that from Truist. I believe it was eighty thousand yeah. dollars. Twice a year. Um, no, part of it. It is structured. Part of there are two payments per year. One is principal and interest, and the other one is just interest. Um, I would have to look at my debt schedule, amortization schedule, to be able to give you that information. Can I call you sometime and maybe talk yeah. about those numbers? Because I don't understand that whole situation. Absolutely. I couldn't find it. Yeah, and I thought um, I had given you guys some information on the debt, uh, the, the entire board, I believe, maybe January-ish. I had given you all the information on the debt service, I believe. So that's the whole debt service? Yes. 
yes. whole debt service. Yeah, I get okay, well, and it had the, the and it had them all and it had them all broken out, if I remember correctly. And part of that is that loan. Yes. And you say it's the fifty one hundred. It's in the fifty one hundred. <clears throat> You'll see dues, interest, other, and other uses of funds. Okay. What's the title of the document that I should look under? It's oh, you somewhere. should look under the debt service information that I saw. The I, document. The, talk, I, the document. I, not on this no. document. I'm talking about the debt service schedule that I had sent to all the board members. I believe it was either January or February that it was sent out, and it specified all three loans that we currently have. We have three loans. Correct. We have the mortgages on the building. We have. Um, we have two that were refinanced when I first came here through First National Bank. We got very attractive interest rates, less than a percent. Um, and then these, the third one was for the most recent capital expenditures that we as a district have undertaken. Um, that was for the, the, the roof at the high school. It was for some masonry work, re, work and repairs. It was for some... Um, all of those type items that we needed to do. Didn't that roof, for example, that seven hundred sixty-nine thousand dollar roof on Alverton, and all, didn't that go on with the our debt service for the buildings, the big, yes. the big yes. debt, yes. the millions, that, the millions, yes. and millions. I'm talking about, about. I'm talking about the debt that we undertook for the for the roof of the high school. Okay, but that loan that we made for the football field, that's not part of that, or is it? It's all part of the debt service. Yes. It is part of it, okay. Yes, it's all part of the total debt service. And that increased our payoff year from two or three yeah, years. And I, had, like and I had given you all that information. Yeah. Um, like I said, I had sent it to the board. I can resend it to you again. Um, I had sent it either January or February because you had asked me for that information, so I sent it to the entire board. All right, no more discussion. We are voting on the board, or sorry, the uh, general fund board summary report. Can I add something super quick? That yeah. debt service was emailed to us on February 13th, so it's an Excel spreadsheet that's called debt service. I don't get emails. I thought that they oh. well ensured that well, you received all of the communications that we yeah, received via email. Lori prints them out and sends them to her. Yeah, okay. so look around. If you keep it in chronological order, it was sent to us on February 13th just so you can go back and look for it. That was last month? Yes, yes. February 13th, 2024. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The board is asked to approve the fund accounting, capital fund, and food service check summary listing as attached. I need a motion. So do. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I pass. Uh, dental and vision. The board is asked to approve the new national vision administrator's rates for the 24-25 year. Single, $2.72 per employee, plus one, $4.42 per employee, plus two or more, and $7.76 a month. The board is also asked to approve the new United Concordia rates for the 24-25 year. Employee only, $26.27. All other coverages, $78.19 per month. I need a, a, the motion. So do. Second. I need a second. How can we second. vote on this when, like, we haven't, the consortium hasn't? This actually, what the consortium is going to be sending us is for health care. This is for dental and, and vision, national vision. Oh, I read that different. Sorry. That's okay. I read it as dental vision and then health care. So. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sorry. I'll second. We've got a second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, budget transfer to buildings and grounds. The board is asked to approve a budgetary transfer from the contingency fund to buildings and grounds. So do. Need a second. Second. How much? Oh, how much is are you transferring? Fifty thousand dollars. That's all that's in the contingency fund. Um, I ran the report today, 
And right now there is a balance in the buildings and grounds of from the other day whenever I posted this on board docs. That day it was 17,160.67. Now it's 14,528.27. And we do have a multitude of items. I know one thing in particular that comes to mind is I know Mr. Trader needs glycol for one, for the, I believe you said that was for the chiller. And if memory serves, that $7,000. Is that, is that correct? So, I mean, there are a multitude of items that, that we need throughout to keep the, the buildings running. You're transferring 50,000, did you say? 50,000, so they would have like 65,000 in there now. Yeah. And where did you transfer it from? The contingency fund. The contingency. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, transfer unassigned fund balance to assigned fund balance. The board is asked to approve a transfer of $600,000 from the unassigned fund balance to the assigned fund balance. So do. Second. Discussion. That's a huge amount of money to be transferred to an assigned fund balance. Can you explain why you're doing that? <coughs> if you look at, hang on, I have the paper here with me somewhere. If you look at our capital needs um, with chiller compressors and stadium turf and security alarms and auditorium lighting, exterior fire escape ste steps by the auditorium, bleachers, sprinkler systems, sidewalk repairs, gymnasium paintings, Gym, replace gymnasium lighting, sound systems, dump trailers, the truck feed. We have three trucks right now that are 2010s. They've been in service for 14 years. We have another one that we're going to um, advertise and get ready from the dump truck from 1979. Um, we have, um, so with all of that coming into play, our total remaining items that we need to do for the district is 4 million five hundred and seventy two. $1,222.64. Those are with some quotes, some of those are with estimations, but obviously we have a multitude of items through the district that need to be attended to. So Pam, we're using our fund balance to pay for this bill, is that correct? Well, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put the fund balance into a signed okay. so that we cannot mm -hmm. spend it for anything else, else, else. other than capital but the money for all those things you just read comes out of the fund balance well some of it i mean it all depends upon who wants you know who approves what that we need to do at this point in time some of it we may need to do an additional um loan i but like i said the, the intent is to put as much much aside as we can to get some items done so that we don't have to do another loan. Yeah, one of the, right the um, rules of the Bible when it comes to fund balance is you don't use your savings account to pay your bills. There's always been a strong feeling that people should not use fund balances for for expense payment. Well, but these are large, large ticket items yeah, they like are. I had talked about earlier. So for yeah, they example, are. if you need a roof on your house. Okay, well what's yeah. left in the fund balance then, the unassigned? The unassigned? If you take that 600000 out. Let me look, because that, that was in last month's presentation. Do you have that? Uh, roughly $2.7 million. $2.7 million if we take this $600,000? $2.7 million. Yes. It was a lot higher than that. Well, it... The unassigned. That's the unassigned. Yeah. In total, it would be over $4 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, they always say that assigned, that that assigned money is spent. Would you agree with me? The assigned money is spent. It's, it's, it's dog eared. It's already it's, defined. It's spoken for. That it's spoken for. It's gone. It's done. So we're <coughs> left with an unassigned fund balance of $2.7 million. That was much, much higher. And again, it's my concern, are we paying our bills with our savings account? Because our fund balance is supposed to be our savings. And I think they recommend that your fund balance should be able to cover how many months of expenses? I believe it's to be 5 to 8%. Yeah. And it was, what, when we looked at it, the 2 So if, if ours is um, 
35 million, we have two, two, seven. What percent is that? I mean, seven something? It's hard to do that. Yeah. Yeah, we've I would right assume it's seven. always fluctuating. Right around seven? Around seven. Okay, so one of the reasons to move that out is because the state's been screaming about excessive fund balances. And they want to keep it, what, under eight? Five to eight. In the unassigned, that is correct. Okay. But on the other hand, what do we do if we don't get money and we, we have to pay bills? Because I think I read somewhere, correct me if I'm wrong, that the fund balance should be able to, you should have enough money on hand to cover how many months without getting, a, uh, what do you call the advance loan or the... Uh, yeah. I think tax months. anticipation note? Yeah, land, yeah, I'm sorry, the uh, loan and tax anticipation note or money from the state. And if it doesn't come, we're, we're going to be forced to do that if the state doesn't give us the money. That's why we so our, our unassigned fund balance is 2.7. That's, that's, that's one of the reasons why we've asked you to advocate, advocate, advocate. Well, when I do it, they tell me to go tell them to cut, cut, cut. That's the answer <laughs> I get. <laughs> Okay, well, you, you've explained this to me because I didn't, I thought our fund balance was higher. Well, it was, but like I said, it will be now 2.7 million because that takes out this, that's taking yeah. out the 600,000 that we want to put towards capital funds. When will you put money back into the fund balance? Hopefully at the end of this year. I mean, I'm okay. that person that, and, and and I can tell you my principals, they love me for this, they don't. Um, I, I will be cutting off purchasing at the end of this month, which is okay. what I did last year. Because to me, if you're at the end of March and school essentially is over, the end of May, you've got mm -hmm. two months, except for emergencies only, what do you truly need to spend money for? I understand that. That's, that's a good philosophy. And that's, we what hear I, a that's what I did last year. We hear a lot about fund balances, Pam. I mean, you hear about I, that well, all that's, the time. Well, that's the point that I was making earlier, yeah. talking about the gentleman from PDE, that you know, we as the business manager said to him, look, we're told to do this, we're told to do this, but a lot of things are counterintuitive because we don't know when the state is going to pa pass their budget. Okay. Um, so we're going to vote um, to transfer. The board has asked to approve a transfer of $600,000 from the unassigned fund balance to the assigned fund balance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I want to say no because I'm worried about it. Mm. Okay. Worried about it. Quick question though. I just wanted to bring up. Um, there was something, I don't know if uh, Mrs. Colbank or Mr. Krofcheck can talk about this, but something was up with the auditorium lighting even for the musical. Something happened and somebody came in and helped us with that. Can we just get, can we get through this and then oh, yeah. at the end? But we'll I just see it's that. in there in, in this yeah. particular thing that we're transferring money with. And so is that regarding what just happened or is that regarding future? You mean on the, on the list, uh -huh. capital items? Yeah. I believe that is because of that situation. Okay. All right. You saw the lights. The chairs probably need fixed too. The ones that we sat in, it was just like yeah, metal wonky. between us. That's, that, that's a big, that's a big is, ticket item. That's, right there. Yeah, that's, a, know, but that's <laughs> a renovation of school type situation yeah. there. I don't know if there's a way to repair that for safety. Next section, uh, next section is building grounds and security. Uh, playground equipment ESSER. The board is asked to approve the purchase of accessibility additions to the playground equipment for SPC and SES paid through ESSER 3 funds at a cost of $38,256. So do. Second. Discussion. And, yep, what's, what comes with it? So if, um, if the board remembers, they uh, approved purchase, purchases of new playground equipment for both SPC uh, at the kindergarten section and SES, which is right kind of by the, um, the second grade hallway uh, area. Uh, however, within that, um, Within those upgrades, we didn't have anything um, for students who needed any kind of adapted right. play, play equipment, which if we're talking about the needs of all, we need to make sure all is all. Exactly. Um, so the, the cost, I, I had a, one of our teachers come to me and, and ask me about it, and I said, do some research, see what you can find out. Um, and she found um, these three items that I'm, I'm showing now to, to the public. Uh, these are the three items that uh, they believe are gonna work the best for our kids in both buildings. I figure if you do it for one, you do it for both buildings. 
Um, so this is what you're looking at in terms of uh, adding to both of those play systems. Now, what are we doing with all of the caution tape that's wrapped around all these playground pieces? Alf? I will tell you that I did see a bench in the one playground area right out here that is caution taped around it. So that's on my that's on my list of questions I need asked that I'm sure we don't have. And part of the for. playground is as um, well. And which I go look at which playground. So as you're as you're coming up and you're coming past the one on your right, the bigger one on your right. Yeah, the first one. The yeah. first one and the it's second one. First, first, the very first one you pass. I'll take a look. I don't know. Okay. I'll add that to my list. It's the part that goes. Yeah. That's a very technical description. Of yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I will not draw a. And it's diagram just you know that. kind of one string just flapping in okay. the winds like okay. it's dancing. Caution tape. Pam, after you pay the thirty-eight thousand two hundred fifty-six, how much Esther's money is left? Didn't we look at that the other day? Very much. This was set aside for playground equipment from Esther's money, correct? Um, no, that we had two. We had two playground equipment purchases. <coughs> mm -hmm. This was something in addition. Okay. I can. We can get that for you next meeting. Okay. How much is left? Yeah. Yeah. You have to right. spend it before September. Is that it? September that 2024. Yeah. That is correct. All right, uh, now to the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. SHS Chiller Repair. The board is asked to discuss the SHS Chiller Repairs covered under warranty by the insurance company. So moved. Second. Oh, wait, I didn't read the re recommended action. Let me go back. The board is asked to approve the SHS Chiller Repair covered under the district's insurance policy, or ins district's insurance plan. The cost of the deductible is $10,000. That'll be our expense on just 10,000. That is correct. Okay. Yes. Can you use the Esther's money for that? Some of what's left? Since it's an unexpected expense? I'd have to look at the allowable. Yeah, we'd have to look at, have the, to look at the allowable uses of it. Something to look at. I mean, it might pay you burn yeah. up. Is that, a, is that a normal amount for a deductible for us? Yes. Okay. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I, can well, I take call time out real quick? Yeah, yeah sure. I'm sorry. Um, the, the reason this is really on the agenda is because I, I kind of needed some direction. If there's something that is typically covered under warranty or under insurance at a school district, um, then the district typically just goes and gets that fixed because it's not like you're choosing different bids. It's, it's not coming out of the general fund. Um, so in this case, we were asked by the insurance company to get a couple quotes. Um, and we kind of, like, I wanted some direction um, to kind of protect Mr. Trader um, and myself, because I know there's been a lot of questions on on who wants to do what um, with with the current board. So Did you well, should also tell them that we, we are going to get a two-year warranty on everything. So depending on which, which bid the... The district chooses. There are two bids, yeah, well, uh, very detailed. Still. You could choose the lowest bid that has a two to five year warranty. Mr. Trayer, you can speak more about it because you're more <coughs> knowledgeable than I am. I'll speak math. You can you can speak chiller. But this action saves our school board like seventy some thousand dollars if we just do the ten thousand dollar warranty. If we do it under the that's insurance huge. Yeah. That's a huge savings. And I know Sam was initially criticized for looking into it, and I, I think what he did was, I'm very grateful to him for what he did, that he took the time to research it. Mr. Trader. Mr. Trader. Hey, so, uh, Mr. Lucas, am I allowed to say prices on the different bids? You may. Okay. So I got four different bids. Um, they're based, I, I would feel comfortable with any of them for doing the work. However, two of the bids stand out because they offer a two-year warranty Equipment, labor, parts, and service, which is huge. The other ones do not. Those two bids, there's one for, I believe, $82,000. One's for $80,000. Sorry, the first bid is for $82,630. The other bid is for $80,000 even. Okay, so, we're, we're, so the one for eighty two is the one on the very bottom for, on our aspect. Okay. I was like, wait a minute, that didn't say that. Go ahead, sorry. Okay, so your question, I'm sorry. 
No, I just oh. didn't know what company that one was with for the 82. Oh, that's Gazco. Gazco. Yes. And then what was the other company? H.L. Thomas. I don't know why I, I don't know. Is, am I like looking at the wrong one here? I'm showing. Do we need a motion four, on who five, we're going to go with? So I think you could just direct. I mean, Pam okay. and Dr. Boone, are, is the insurance company allowing you to choose who you want to have do the repairs? Yes, the only thing the insurance company wants is a second bid. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because since this is insurance company money above the district's deductible, you're not required to go with a low bid. And, and if the board wanted a two-year warranty anyway, then you're allowed to choose yes, one of these um, vendors that will provide a two-year warranty. And they're putting new parts in, too, new heaters. Both the, the, the two are. So it would kind of ensure as well of a decent job. So then I guess, really, you just need direction as far as whether or not the board wants to go with one of these two companies that's provided a two-year warranty proposal? That's correct. correct. I'll make that motion. Second. Well, I don't even know that you need to make a motion. I think if you guys <laughs> just tell them, because it's a matter of just telling the insurance company who you want to have do it. You can provide the two quotes for the, um, yeah. the, the companies that provided two-year warranties. Right. I mean, do you, need a, do you need to choose between the two? Uh, or? I mean, I can submit them both, but they're just asking for one. So. Okay. Yeah, you, you're, you would be the best one to make that decision. I would just say just make sure that they are brand new parts versus, you know, refurbished. That they're brand new. Okay. They're brand new. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. So you guys need to approve the motion to spend mm -hmm. yeah. dollars All right, so we are going to um, approve the SHS chiller repair covered under the district's insurance plan. The cost of the deductible is ten thousand uh, dollars. We've had discussion. All those in favor? Oh, aye. 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 Do we give these bids to the insurance company and they choose? No, we we give them. We have to give them two bids, but we tell them which one we want. We tell them which one. Yeah. Well, how are we voting on that tonight? We just said we didn't have to vote. We just direct, kind of direct them what to do. Um, if you have an opinion, it would be... There may be a conflict of interest involved here. That's why I'm asking. Why? What conflict is that? What's conflict? Hmm? What's the conflict? Uh, there's a person on this board who's direct, very direct relative works for one of those companies. I bet. That's me. Yep. You can speak it out. Yep. He would abstain himself, I'm sure. Well, she said we're not going to vote. He just well, why, would he, why would you even need so to in say essence, that? Like, if there is a vote. If there is a vote. And so to that end, to you up. if this board allows administration to direct the insurance company who you want, then, there, then you've avoided the conflict of interest because the board hasn't specifically said we want X company or Y company. Well, that's good. I mean, they're both good companies, and they're both going to do exactly the same yeah. so that yeah. whatever one, that's fine. Just trying to keep yeah. it clean. Understood. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Oh. Or do you want to just abstain? Oh, yeah, that's right. Abstain. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to spend all my time in purgatory. <laughs> all right. Next section is athletics activities. Uh, no items for this month. And uh, closing exercises. Citizens comment. Anybody can come up now. When you adjourn. Does anybody want to speak? Yep. Uh, Rhonda, would you like to speak at this point? Hi, Rhonda Hamrock, uh, 1061 Kingview Road. Um, if you were all wondering why I was back there waving my hand at the very beginning of the meeting, I realized that I made an error. I guess I should have actually spoke at the beginning. So you know, Christy Smith was nice enough to show me on the agenda what I wanted to speak on is listed as file attachment. So that's why I didn't think it was on the agenda. 
So sorry about that, but I do have one concern. Of course, it was concerning what you've already done. That's fine. But Pam, I was wondering, could you just elaborate for me for one minute on how many current secretaries before we hired the fourth tonight, or under or the extra, maybe you said eight, I can't remember now. How many do you have underneath you currently under me? before the hiring? Okay. Right now I have Joanne Lane. Oh, or I don't I need should, their name. I shouldn't give them a name. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I have my accounts payable, my transportation, <coughs> and um, transportation and um, maintenance. maintenance person, one person. Mm -hmm. I have um, the person that handles access, and I share her with athletics. Mm -hmm. That's half a person, and I share half a person with um, she does benefits and food service. So technically, so, you have three. Four, if we call. Four, once we hired the C one. <laughs> yeah. Would that be correct? Pardon me? Four, if we call your half and your half is a one person. Could With the share? person that I we guess. hired this evening, that is correct. OK. Uh, my point that I wanted to actually make to you is for the last 34 years, Southmoreland School District was operating with a business manager and four total secretaries. You now have five. No, um, no we don't. Know. She just said with we have the four. I, I said to give me the numbers before you hired oh, three. tonight. Three. OK, then I stand corrected. I asked for before you hired tonight. Yes, sorry about Thank that. Thank you. So basically, you have just filled the position. Correct. It's all the same. Correct. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. what I was trying to get to. Other than that, the only other thing I think I want to actually talk about is the confusion that continues at your board meetings. And I just want to make a suggestion. Um, not only Southmoreland, almost every school district in this area, and currently several, still do work session meetings and then voting meetings. I'm not really sure exactly what year Southmoreland opted to do uh, work sessions and executive sessions and voting meetings all in one night, but clearly from the 59 policies that were voted on at your last meeting in one motion, there were a lot of questions on that. And I just think a work session meeting would solve all that. You come, you do a work session, you talk about every detail, you have seven days or 14 days or whatever until your next meeting. Rich, you know what I'm talking about. You did this for years with two meetings. I would imagine Catherine did. I don't know that. Thank I don't you. know Sam did. But it's a suggestion. I'm not trying to make your volunteerism longer. It's just for clarity. Yep. Thanks, Rhonda. Uh, John Yotzi. I just wanted to state and for Lori, Pam, and the other secretaries, administrative assistants in the school district that I'm, I know you've come under a lot lately, um, not feeling the support from the community or the board, um, but myself and I know there's other board members here that do support you and we do appreciate the, the job you're doing because I, I see every day I'm up at the schools, you guys are putting the kids first and really trying hard to do the best with what you got. So I just wanted to put that out that we appreciate what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And everyone in, underneath you, like, yes, thanks. I don't think you could do it without I could them. not do, we could not do what we do without our ladies, that is for sure. And the building, the building. <coughs> and the building yeah. secretaries, yeah, all, yeah. We couldn't do what Secretary we do on a daily basis. All of these. Yeah, Thank I think you. one of our interviews the other night described it as having ping pong balls thrown yes. at you when yeah. you're working in an yes. office. And I know I feel that way and I'm not in a school, but just, oh, here's a student that needs the nurse. Someone has a bloody nose. Someone lost a tooth. Somebody needs to call oh, yeah. their mom. They forgot their trumpet. You know, yeah. all the things that oh, yeah. they deal I, with in five minutes. And, there's a solar eclipse coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're all incredible. Uh, any other citizens' comments? All right, I need a motion to adjourn. So do. Second. Second. Um, I just want the, the public to know we will be entering into executive session after um, the public session tonight. Um, all those in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Opposed? I don't know. What, what are the what what's, what's it about? 923. What is it? Uh, Apple. Uh, <laughs>